Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have three hearings, two from a TPO motion and one from the family law case, with TV's The Bachelor, Clayton, who is attempting to get a TPO against a woman who claims she's pregnant with his twins and won't stop harassing him about the pregnancy, going as far as filing for a parenting plan in family court. Clayton says his contact is unwanted and harassing, as he knows for a fact he can't be the father, as they didn't have that kind of date. Let's see what the judge thinks of this circus. I'm uh, Commissioner Joe Kessis. We're here in the matter of Clayton Eckhard. Eck, am I saying that right now? Eckhard. Eckhard, sorry, versus Laura Owens. This is CB 202305-3952. We'll begin by having everyone state their name. Mr. Eckhard, if you can state your name for me. Clayton Eckhard. All right, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. Attorney Joshua Lopez representing Laura Owens, who's uh, present via Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Ms. Owens. If you can state your name for me. Laura Owens. All right, thank you. We're here today regarding the uh, pre-issuance hearing on a petition for an injunction against harassment that was filed by Mr. Eckhart. Um, and so we have an hour and a half for the hearing. That means each side has about 40 minutes to conduct their and their testimony. So you do want to make sure you're being conscientious of what you want to present in the time that you have available. Um, we do have a number of exhibits. Um, and so if you would like to use an exhibit or uh, admit an exhibit, then you do need to lay some what I'm going to call foundation for that exhibit, which means you need to tell the court what the exhibit is if there's a specific date and time that relates to that exhibit, how you have knowledge of the exhibit, and uh, how it's relevant to what we're doing. And then you need to actually move to admit the exhibit. If you want to present an exhibit, you have to, once you've laid that foundation, you have to actually move to the court to ask to admit the exhibit. Just because you submitted them doesn't mean they come into evidence unless you move to admit those. Okay? Um, and then um, you'll have the opportunity, so Jackard, you're going to go first because you're the plaintiff. You'll um, present your case and your testimony, and then the other side uh, counsel will have the opportunity to question you, and then they can call witnesses, and you'll have an opportunity to question them, and then at the end, everyone will have an opportunity to make a closing argument, okay? The things that people can testify about, you do need to make sure that they are related to something that you have personal knowledge of. Um, so you can't just say, I saw something on the internet, and so now I can testify about it, okay? It doesn't need to be something that you have uh, some personal knowledge about. And um, I know that this case also has a family court matter. This is not the family court case. This is not the trial on the family court issues. So I need everyone to focus on the issues that we have for this hearing. So we're not deciding pregnancy issues, we're not deciding uh, paternity issues, those are not the issues that are going to be decided today. So what this court is looking for is a determination as to whether or not there were a series of events um, that were aimed at a particular person that would cause a reasonable person to be annoyed, alarmed, or harassed, that that person was in fact alarmed, annoyed, or harassed, and that those actions had no uh, legitimate purpose. Those are the findings that the court is looking to make. So, record for you, you're trying to show by preponderance of the evidence that that was the case. And then, obviously, Ms. Owens is going to be trying to show that there is not a basis for the injunction. Um, so the things that are outlined in the petition are the things that can be discussed or addressed, okay? Um, but as I said, um, you know, we're not discussing whether or not officially that there's a pregnancy or whether or not officially there's a paternity issue, okay? So we need to make sure that we are keeping on track with what we want to show in our, our case. And so. A series of events that does need to be more than one, uh, but it can be over uh, any period of time. Um, so those are the things that we're looking for. Does anyone have any questions about 
not what I've just gone over. Uh, Your Honor, I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, did you want to hear opening statements? I mean, I would allow people to do an opening if you wanted to, or you can waive opening your way. Okay. And my other question is that um, what I believe that Mr. Eckert uh, is going to present are emails um, regarding alleged harassment in this matter. But the emails, and I know you had indicated that, I, and I understand this is not the family law, uh, the family court case, but the emails and the alleged harassment have a lot to do with paternity and things of that matter. Um, so I think that those things are going to come out despite this not being us trying to prove paternity and things like that. I think the content of the emails has to do with that, and so those things will come out. And, and I understand as they relate to the specific basis for um, the communication okay. uh, that they can be brought out. I just don't want the parties to think that I'm going to be making any determinations as it relates to those other issues. Thank you. So do either party wish to make an opening statement? Oh, or we can I'm just begin with the testimony. Present my evidence. Your Honor, I'd like to make an opening statement. Okay, go ahead. Your Honor, you're going to hear that back in May of 2023, Laura Owens and uh, Clayton Eckerd became intimate, which led to my client becoming pregnant with twins. And since May of 2023, Clayton has refused to believe that my client became pregnant. He's refused to believe that he's the father of these unborn children, and he has refused to work with my client to create a plan on how and if he wants to be a part of these future children's lives. Instead, Clayton turned to the Internet. He's turned to his fans. He's turned to his followers, and he's spread rumors and lies about my client. Clayton has insinuated that my client lied about being pregnant, Clayton posted online about legal issues he knew little about regarding my client, Laura Owens, and a legal battle that she was involved with and is still involved with, with another individual. Clayton has posted about Laura that has led to harassment by his fans and followers. Laura has received harassing messages. Laura was asked to kill herself, and Laura has been staying inside to protect herself, which is why she's currently appearing uh, via Microsoft Teams for this particular proceeding. And again, this all stems from Mr. Eckerd's post online. All communication from Laura to Clayton during these time periods that uh, Mr. Eckerd put in his petition has been related to Laura's pregnancy with Mr. Eckerd's unborn children. It's also been related to what Mr. Eckerd would like to do moving forward with the unborn children, creating a parenting plan, and actually it's, in, it's also in regard to potentially him taking down posts, which again led to harassment by his, friend, uh, his fans and followers. None of the communication that Laura directed at Clayton was for harassment purposes. All the communication was for legitimate purposes. And a reasonable person in those same circumstances would not be seriously alarmed, annoyed, or harassed by that communication. And at the end of this hearing, we're going to request that the injunction against harassment be uh, dismissed or not issued. Thank you. Um, so for testimony purposes, Mr. Eckert, I'm assuming you're going to be testifying, and then Ms. Owens, I'm assuming, is testifying counsel. Ms. Owens will be testifying, Your Honor. Okay, so if I can have you both raise your right hands, you can be sworn in for me. Thomas, where the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. You? Yes. Okay. All right. Mr. Eckert, if you want to go ahead and uh, begin with your uh, presentation of your testimony. Thank you. Uh, I think it is important to um, just provide a little bit of context for the opening statement. Um, I, it is what he had stated. Um, I do not believe that Lauren or Laura is pregnant. I know we're not here to discuss that today, but 
Because of the evidence I will present, I will explain why this I've been receiving unwanted messages for the last five months, and I have blocked this individual from all communication, yet they continue to send me messages. And I have asked this individual uh, to early on do a paternity test, and she said she would not do it unless I were to date her exclusively. And so then this Ms. Owens threatened to go public, which I have submitted that evidence today. Uh, but my reasoning for why I doubt her and why I have chosen to cut off all communication is because, um, if I can submit uh, Exhibit 32. And, and what is Exhibit 32? So Exhibit 32 is an ultrasound image that I was sent uh, via email by Laura. No ultrasound report was provided, and when I asked to speak with a doctor, uh, she would not allow me to talk to that doctor. We also did an early resolution conference uh, in the last couple weeks. The mediator asked for her to make that phone call to that facility to prove that she did have this do this ultrasound. She did not do it. She was not willing to make that phone call. And so with that picture and that picture alone, I believe it is photoshopped and there is no report that she has been able to provide. And I've asked for it and I would like a doctor to be able to stand behind that image um, as I believe it's a fraudulent medical record that she has submitted to me via email. Okay. Are you moving to admit to the 32? I would like to admit, yes, to the 32. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Exhibit 32, double check. You know what, actually, Your Honor, I'm not going to object to this. All right, 32 will be admitted. Thank you. May I continue? Okay. I would also like to admit um, Exhibit 36. Exhibit Before we get too much further, if you can just explain to me what you believe your relationship is or was with Ms. Owens, because part of the you know, reason it's an injunction is because of the the relationship by nature of it, I think that you listed uh, as being not an intimate relationship. So I guess maybe if you can clarify that for me. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, um, Laura and I had engaged in uh, oral sex uh, one time. And uh, to me, as I still filed this, I did not believe that constituted a relationship of any kind as it was a one-time thing. Okay, thank you. All right, go ahead, sorry. Um, exhibit 36, I would like to admit that as well. This is a flash drive file. Uh, this was also sent to me by Laura Owens via email. Uh, she, in this email, uh, which I actually have, can I submit multiple at one time or no? Or reference them at least for now? Okay. Um, so exhibit 18, uh, is a screenshot of the uh, email that she had sent me with this ultrasound video that she claimed was, um, as you can see on there, I don't know, a million percent real ultrasound video. Uh, she's claiming that that was the ultrasound of our children. But then I uncovered uh, the Exhibit 34. Uh, this is a YouTube video from over six years ago. Uh, and that video has the video that she sent me within it. And so Exhibit 36 is, two, uh, is the video that she sent me and then the video on YouTube. And as you play both of them out, you can see that they are identical videos. She had cut a portion from the YouTube video and claimed it to be her own when it was somebody else's. And so I would like to um, 
well, I'd like to admit at least at the, uh, Exhibit 36, but also 34 and 18, to prove that she did, in fact, send this to me via email, um, and as 18 and 34 show, um, but also then to uh, admit 36, because that is the visual proof that um, these videos are identical. Any objection to 18? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I don't think there's enough foundation for the different things that Mr. Eckert is, is stating. The, it sounds like something was sent to him, and I don't know what website that he's going to to get these. Um, and the things that he's claiming in here, he's saying that these are identical. I, I don't know if he can testify that these are, in fact, identical. Okay. So, 18 appears to be... Um, kind of a screenshot of almost similar to 32, but I think it's closer to matches with 34, but I think 18 is the one that actually was sent to him. Is that correct? That is correct. So do you have a specific objection to 18? Or objection if that's to what was sent to him. More related. Oh, uh, yeah. 17, 18. 18, I think, was the one that was sent to him. So do you have something specific about that exhibit? I mean, maybe just some foundation regarding who it was sent from and how he knows. Got it. Um, so, Mr. Kurt, if you can just outline for the court specifically the way that you received this. Yes, uh, I was sent this by Laura Owens. Um, as you can see in the screenshot, this was sent from her. Um, what date? Uh, the date of it was October 6th at 4.39 p.m. Any objection to 18? There you go. 18 will be admitted. And then 34, uh, give, give me more information about when and where you received this document. So, uh, Exhibit 34, I uncovered um, as I had questioned the validity of Exhibit 18, what she sent me. I did not believe that it was in her ultrasound. Um, so, I started to look online and I found this YouTube video. And upon playing it, I found that the video that she had sent to me is within that YouTube video. Okay. Objections to 34. There you are. 34 will be admitted. And then uh, objections to 36. There you are. All right, so 36 will be admitted. Record, if you want to continue. Yes, I would like to. Um, I would also like to discuss Exhibit 30. So Exhibit 30 uh, entails uh, a prior court case with this individual. And the reason why I bring it up is because of the repeated or similar patterns of behavior that Ms. Owens has exhibited. In this exhibit, there is an ultrasound um, in which was you know, she presented to this individual, and then it was found that through a reverse Google image search that she had taken that from online as well. In this case as well, she states that she became pregnant by this individual, and she also claims that she was pregnant, became pregnant with twins after one sexual encounter. And so the parallels between my case and this individual's case, I think it's important to bring that to life and admit that as well, uh, because this individual has displayed repeated patterns of behavior and I think that's important to note uh, as to why I question the validity of this individual's claims. And where did you obtain this document? I obtained this document from this court. I came in here, it's publicly accessible. Um, so I came here and I searched it and I, um, there's about 14 pages in this that I printed off 
there's more in the court system, but I consolidated it to bring out uh, the documents that referenced um, similar instances. Uh, and so um, this individual that she had brought this claim against also questioned if she was pregnant or not. Um, it does state in here that she provided sonographic images um, and then a reverse Google image search revealed the images were identical to a sonogram found on a blog post from 2015. And then uh, within this document, it shows the pictures um, that were submitted to the court, uh, the ultrasounds in question. Um, and then uh, is, I'd also like to bring to, um, in this document, in the picture, it says uh, that she'd sent to him, it looks like you're going to be a dad to one or two babies. Um, and so she again states that she was pregnant with twins with this individual. Um, and then on one of the last pages of this document that I had pulled out, uh, it was noted in this court case, the plaintiff uh, reportedly fabricated a pregnancy and subsequent abortion in the past during a relationship with a Michael Maricini in 2016. Um, I do not know um, the specifics of all of these cases, but I do want to bring this to light and submit it because, or ad admit the exhibit because of the repeated patterns of behavior that I think are important to note because contextually speaking, that is part of the reason why um, I will then present my evidence towards why I feel I'm harassed because I do not believe what this individual is, is stating. I don't believe anything that she's saying. And these are the reasons why. Senator, I'm gonna object to this being entered. This is an ongoing case. We don't know what claims are or are not true within this exhibit. Um, I don't think that it's appropriate and I don't think that it's relevant to Mr. Eckert's petition um, in this specific matter. So one of the allegations is a pattern of behavior of accusing men of getting pregnant in his petition. So I guess that's what he was presenting it for. So hang on, Ms. Owens, just a minute. I think that's one of the allegations in his petition, but um, Again, Your Honor, I, I, this is an ongoing case. Um, we don't know what the result of this specific case uh, regarding this exhibit is. We don't know anything about this case. We have a. It looks like this is some sort of complaint. Um, it looks like it's a motion to dismiss. I'm sorry. And or, or there's several documents here. I don't think that this is relevant for this particular case. I think that this is speculation. These are claims that other people have made. I think this is hearsay. I don't think it's admissible for this type of hearing. All right. So I, I'm not going to be able to admit Exhibit 30. I do agree that there's not. Uh, there's. Uh, this is a complaint and a motion to dismiss the death. Whether or not there's significant in, in information enough to be able to support that, and whether you have any knowledge of it, uh, is is. I think I'm not going to be able to admit that exhibit. Uh, Ms. Owens is raising her hand, but uh, your attorney is, is here. So did you have a question? Uh, no, he covered everything. Okay. And, and he's going to be speaking on your behalf unless you're testifying. So uh, I would like okay. to testify. I, I, you don't have your chance to testify, but you can't testify in the middle of his testimony. And then your right. attorney needs to be the one that speaks on your behalf uh, unless it's your testimony. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Eckert, anything else? Yes, um, now I'd like to go in and, and admit each of these documents. Um, and I had them set in an order. Uh, so the very first one, um, Exhibit 1, uh, this is just showing all of the uh, files that I have accrued. Um, there's um, often two to three emails that she sends me a day. She started sending me emails, harassing emails on the 6th of June and she is still sending me emails as of uh, yes, yesterday. And so exhibit one is just showing the frequency of her harassment uh, from a bird's eye view. And so when you get the email from her, tell me how this, how this gets created. Yes, so when she sends me emails, I screenshot them and then I place them into these files. 
um, so that I have them for a record. Okay. Any objection to Civit 1? Yes, Your Honor. Again, I don't think that the frequency of emails is something that would indicate harassment without something more. If there's communication back and forth between emails, then the frequency of, it, of how many times somebody sends an email, I might send 60 a day, but the frequency of emails between, uh, I believe, May to now, and I, I don't know how many these are, um, we don't see the emails in here. There's nothing to say that this, in fact, is harassment within the meaning of the statute. So for those reasons, I'm objecting to this being admitted. All right. Every objection, I'll admit it to that one. Thank you. Can I continue? Mm -hmm. Exhibit two, um, the, a lot of these next exhibits are all going to be um, phone numbers that Laura has contacted me from. Uh, she has contacted me from 13 different phone numbers, and uh, I finally stopped blocking the 13th one because, uh, because I knew that she just would continue to create a Google Voice uh, phone number. Um, and so uh, this first one, it says in the text message, it's Laura, I mean, please unblock my, and then she shows her number. That was her original number. Um, and so I would like to admit these one by one uh, to show again the many different times that she has continually contacted me after blocking her from different phone numbers. And so this is a text message from Lynn, do you know? Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't. It just says text message from today. Um, again, I was screenshotting these as I received them. I received these over the last um, five months as far as what exact day. Uh, I, I am. I'm not. I'm not right now. I'm not aware, and I don't know if there's. Can you, can you approximate when this message came in, or you don't know? Um, to to be honest with you, Your Honor, uh, as far as when this one came in versus the other ones, I, I I don't know. This one says I have it down here as her blocked cell number twelve. So this is probably one of her last ones um, that she had sent to me, um, and I would say that I think this one came through probably about. Uh, a month ago, because since then she went back to resorted back to sending me emails because she put a mail tracker on um, the messages, so she was able to see when I was reading them. Um, but during this period of time, when she was sending these text messages, I was not opening her messages, and so she knew through her mail tracker that I wasn't reading them. So she decided to go about uh, the Google Voice um, manner in order to get them to me because she was she could see that I was not opening her emails. Okay, so you have this one, you believe, is, is from uh, one of the 12, at least one, the 12th message, that a uh, 12 cell phone number that she was using. Correct, yes, so each of these came from Laura, yes. Okay, any objection to two? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, again, this record must show that there is harassment. When I look at this text message, I don't see anything that is even remotely close to harassing here. It's a text message indicating to him uh, that they're having a boy and girl. He has an ultra, uh, she has an ultrasound to show. Um, I just don't see anything in here that is even related to the petition itself that shows that this is harassment, that he is annoyed, alarmed, harassed in any way. This is simply a text message. Well, I mean, part of his you know, petition is a, the, the high volume of those and that ultimately he can testify whether he was annoyed or harassed by these. So I'm going to admit exhibit two over the objection. Thank you. Um, again, uh, exhibit three, just for to make this, um, again, I want to be respectful of everyone's time here. Um, this is, again, another cell phone uh, that she had contacted me from, so I'd like to admit this one as well for the same reasons as uh, exhibit two. Uh, Your Honor, uh, it's Sounds like there's going to be a number of different uh, cell phone cell phone um, screenshots submitted to the court, and I just want to make record sure that I'm in, I am objecting to all of these based on the same reasons I was objecting uh, in Exhibit Two. So okay, so so I don't have to just repeat myself over and over again. All right, and so. Um, Record, this exhibit three um, it 
has that similar language to please and block the original number. So you're telling me this is this came from Laura, but from another block number. Correct. All right. I'll admit three over the objection. Thank you. Um, four, also sent from Laura. This one says that she couldn't get into Google Voice, had to make a new number. So again, this one just um, shows that she uh, was in fact using Google Voice and creating more and more numbers um, in order to harass me. Um, and yes, I did feel harassed because I did not want um, these messages. This one you can see I did um, respond to and what I said is, is how I felt. Um, I was asking for her to um, scheduled the paternity test, which she continuously declined unless I were to date her exclusively. But for the purposes of this text message, it was another unwanted um, text message that she had sent my way. So tell me a little bit more about the dating thing, what, you, what you're telling me when you say that. Yes, so you can see this in this exhibit here. Um, she said, guessing you are, won't read this, but I made you a pretty good offer. Meet up tonight to discuss the pregnancy and the possibility of dating. But regardless of the outcome, I will schedule a test text and test with Ravjin tomorrow. Um, so her stipulation for taking a paternity test early on has always been that she would only do the test if I were to date her exclusively for two weeks. Uh, then she dropped it to a week, um, and I just I did not agree to any of that. I simply just said, as it says in here, drop the dating stipulation, schedule the test, pay for the first part of it, then email me when you schedule it, and I will schedule my part. Um, so I had continuously tried to figure this out, and she would not do the paternity, prenatal paternity test unless I were to date her. And this Ravgen is the? Ravgen is the, um, it is the facility that uh, provided the test so that you can test um, for a prenatal paternity test for twins. Okay. All right, I'll admit four over the objection. Um, five, again, is a, another text message um, well, from her again saying that she doesn't know how to use this app. She's referencing Google Voice. Um, she said, I'd like to meet, no strings attached. I did not want to meet with her. Uh, she's asked me to do multiple times. I do not feel safe uh, meeting with her because I'm not sure what she would claim uh, if we were to meet up. I don't have any reason to meet up with her. So um, this is another text message that she sent me that was unwanted. And very harassing. Over the objection, I'll admit five. Six again. Um, another text message changed, says she should change her number. I would like to admit this one as well for the same reasons as the previous messages. All right, and this is a, a, another different number than previously used. Yes, uh, and then this, actually in this one, I would even just like to highlight she said um, she threatened to leak this to the media, uh, which I will. Um, be admitting my in evidence for that, but she threatened uh, to go to the media, which she ended up doing. Um, this test text message just proves that she was, again, um, looking to defame me um, through, uh, basically, whether we date or leak this to the media. Oh, she threatened me to go to, to the media with this text message, amongst other times she threatened me. All right. I'll admit six over the objection. Seven, um, similar thing again. Uh, she she stated this time she would do it with no strings attached. Um, I had then responded by saying, let's schedule the paternity test regardless. Um, but she was asking for this agreement uh, and that we needed to meet up for a good faith consultation. Uh, again, I did not feel safe meeting up with her one on one. Um, so I disagreed with this. But this is another text message that she decided to send. From a different number. These are all, as I can just, just to reference, these are every single one of these, as you can see at the top, they're all different numbers. So these are all coming from a different number every time. I've met seven over the objection. Another text message, she just states that um, she's sent an email to Ravjin. Um, and then she threatened, do you want sure you want me to go to the public instead of meet up? So that, those were the options. Either we meet up or she goes public with the information. I'll admit eight over the objection. Uh, nine, another message that she met, so I didn't block, as you can see, she sent multiple messages before I decided to block her. Um, and she was asking for a good faith consultation. 
Again, she was trying to meet up with me for what reason, I can only speculate, um, but I did not feel comfortable doing so. Um, and so this is another ma ma uh, phone number that I ended up blocking. And, and can you um, elaborate on what it says? I just made what I think is a very enticing offer. What that means? Um, so to be honest with you, I, I don't remember exactly what her offer was. She made multiple ones, um, but it, they all centered around a very similar, uh, if we meet up and we tried to date, it was two weeks, then it became one week, then it became just meet up um, for this tonight, uh, this good place consultation. And she would make a lot of promises as far as once we do this, then I will go take the test. Um, but again, I did not feel safe being um, with her one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I did ask actually to uh, meet up with the in the court, uh, or I said we could even meet up. Uh, at one point, I said a coffee shop uh, where people were around, and she declined that and said, no, we need to meet up in private. Uh, so uh, I, I said no to that and, um, and blocked her again on this phone number. Red will admit nine over the objection. Uh, again, uh, 10, this is another phone number. Um, she mentions going dark on her, uh, which is a uh, reference to me not responding to her. Again, just to highlight that she has been consistently harassing me with me not responding to her for the large majority um, of these messages. The only time that I was often responding uh, was to try to get a paternity uh, test scheduled. Uh, outside of that, I did not, uh, I had little to no interaction with her. Um, and so at this point, she references here, I will cancel the Ravgen appointment. She had scheduled one, paid the 750 uh, for it. Um, but then uh, in the past, as she, she had stated she had scheduled it, she would end up canceling these. So um, it was just a, a show on her, on her side of things to state, yes, I'm trying to do this test. But when it came down to it, she always placed stipulations whenever I responded to her. So at this point, when she said I spent 750, I did not respond to this and block this phone number because I was not taking any of her what she was saying seriously. Because she can every time I would ask, okay, let's do this, she would she would bring a stipulation on board. Submit to no for the objection. Uh, Eleven. Um, so again, similar thing. I think this is around the same time. She says she'll tell Ravjin that we don't want the appointment next week. Um, but I couldn't be more steadfast in my decision not to take it earlier without the stipulation. So again, she just, the stipulation is the only way, as she says here, and then she says, anyway, I hate to go to the press, but that was your decision as well, and I respect it. Um, and then she even says, uh, she tries to talk about making an offer on a property for real estate, but, um, so I, again, I don't understand why, uh, as clearly there's no relationship here or any interest in me wanting to talk, but yet she was trying to have just any type of discussion uh, with me. But again, she said she was stipulations the only way to do the test, and so I ended up blocking her again. That was mid-11 of her objection. Um, 12, again, this one, she said she wants to do the test. I then said, you want to do the test in my stipulations. She said, you're going to be forced by the court to meet up with me. So the second I found out that she, again, um, I, I asked, she would do it in my stipulation. She ended up saying, you have to meet up with me. And then um, she says down here, I said, you're willing to meet up in a very public place. You will take the test afterwards. She said, no, it's worth a week worth of stipulations and hopefully more. So again, uh, she stated that after she said she wants to take the test, she then confirmed that she was not willing to take the test unless the stipulations were added. Well, uh, 12, the section. 13, um, so uh, again, another message from Laura, different number. Um, I said, I asked her if she'll meet up with the court with the mediator present. She said, that's not how it goes. Meet, we can meet up just us and I will withdraw the request for sanctions. And then again, I, she said, I said, would you meet up in a public location? Uh, this thing was cut off. It was, it was in, in another text message, um, but she ended up disagreeing to, uh, or not being willing to meet publicly. She said we had to meet privately, and so then I blocked her on this phone number as well. On the 13, of the objections. Okay. Um, how am I doing on time? Um, you have about 10 minutes. That's okay. Maybe um, 10 minutes. I want to skip now. I want to make sure I get to the ones that I really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, Exhibit 15. 
uh, Laura sent me a very alarming message uh, stating that she was going to kill herself um, if I do not remove uh, a, uh, it was a video that I posted to my Instagram. Um, so Laura has claimed that uh, my responses online uh, were meant to defame her, um, but that is not the case. Uh, Laura decided to not uh, leak um, the story to the Sun originally. And she leaked it with her as an, an, uh, anonymously, so she did not place her name out there. Um, but what she did do is uh, she mentioned to them that we had an active court case. Uh, so that active court case, she is the one that, that brought that against me. In that court case, her name was on the court documents. So she ended up then leading, bringing that, you know, through the not once this was leaked to the Sun, they submitted the story. And then it stated that within that document that there was an active court case with me. People then searched my name and found her name through that. Um, so this met this email right here, um, she was basically threatening me to take down my video. In my video, I just stated that this individual uh, was making these claims. I just made a statement of the facts that they were making these claims, and they opened the court case against me. Um, and uh, and then from there. I do have a large following. I am a public figure. I was just a celebrity, I suppose. I don't like that word. Um, but uh, I have a large following, and then that audience, I cannot control what they do. Uh, but they then went and found that court case in the system um, and found her name and then started to talk about her online. Uh, and then Laura, I assume, was feeling the pressure from it being online and her name being out there. She then sends me this alarming message, which again, I felt was harassing, but to threaten to kill herself. I don't think anybody should ever receive a message such as that. All right. Donor, I'm gonna uh, continue to object for the same reasons that uh, the other exhibits, uh, two through 11, uh, actually two through 13, uh, for the same reasons. Um, I don't think that, again, this is showing that this is harassment by sending it, an, an email to him, asking him to take down uh, posts or um, saying that maybe she is suicidal. Uh, and for those reasons, I'm requesting that this not be admitted into evidence. All right, I'll admit 15 over the objection. Thank you. Um, I'll come back to that. Um, let's see, I just want to make sure if I have you know, enough time here. Uh, I'll jump ahead here just to uh, exhibit 23. Uh, so Laura has um, contacted multiple nonprofits that I work for uh, in attempts to defame me. Um, and uh, basically get them to not work with me. So in this email here, she sent this to uh, the Arizona SPC. Uh, this was a, um, I just spoke actually at this HOPE conference. I'm a mental health advocate. Uh, and so Laura started, began to blackmail me and reach out to individuals that she had seen that I interacted with online. So I'd like to uh, admit this as evidence uh, that again, she was harassing me through uh, reaching out to individuals close to me in attempts to defame me. And how did you get this? It was sent to you as well? She, she copied me on email. Okay, and when was this sent? This was sent on August 3rd, 2023. Okay. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor, I'm going to object because uh, I, this appears to be an email that, that Mr. Eckard was uh, either to or CC'd on that indicates Ford's reasoning for why she believed that she shouldn't be a speaker at this conference. Again, this isn't harassment, and it doesn't seem like it was directed toward him. It was directed, he, although he was CC'd in the email, or, or he was in the email, it was directed to the HOPE conference um, in relation to whether he should be speaking at this based on what was going on uh, and, and his credibility. I don't think this would be appropriate to be admitted in this case this wasn't directed towards him for harassment purposes, and so this shouldn't be admitted. Right. I'm going to admit 23 over the objection. I would like to now go to uh, exhibit 26. Um, 
this uh, email was sent by Laura uh, threatening to sue me, um, again, with the videos that I was posting in order to protect my own image. Uh, my image uh, is how I make my money, um, and I make my money online, mental health advocate. Also, uh, being a public figure, I have brand deals and such and companies that I work with. Um, so I was everything that I've stated, I've never once mentioned her name in public. And then in this email, as I put up a video to protect my own integrity and protect my own reputation, uh, Laura threatened to sue me with a massive lawsuit uh, and stated she had an unlimited budget to sue me, uh, which I felt was very harassing in nature. This is the same video that was the previous nature of the other email that you were, she was asking to take down? I, I believe this one was. Uh, to be honest with you, again, I, I, I put up a few um, messages or, 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 or videos. I believe this is that was referencing that video, um, where again I or I believe it was. It was either that, but to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it was that one or if it was the one where I stated I had scheduled a um, prenatal paternity test and I was waiting for her to schedule her portion. Um, I submitted about I think I put three or four public statements online. Um, and every time uh, she had threatened me to take it down or, or face legal action. Any objection to 26? Uh, yes, Your Honor, same thing that I've been objecting for this entire time. I, again, I don't think that this email specifically shows that she was trying to harass him. I don't think that is relevant to the petition. And for those reasons, I don't think this should be admitted. I'll admit 26 over the objection. Thank you. Um, anything else? I think, uh, so um, I just, I guess I will go to Exhibit 19 now. Uh, this was again another email that I was copied on. Uh, Laura had sent this to my uh, father. I uh, sent a long email, um, basically saying that I blocked her and that you know hopefully he could get through to me um, and uh, you know get me to end up talking with her. So uh, she again, I just I want to admit this just to show that she went to many very dis various different avenues, friends and family, uh, in order to bring light to uh, this uh, and, and put pressure on me to then interact with her. Different objection to 19. Uh, this isn't directed at Clayton, Your Honor. This is directed at his father. It's an email to his father. Um, Mr. Eckert's father is not indicated in this petition. He's not here today. I don't think that this should be admitted for those reasons. It does appear that Mr. Eckert was copied on the email as well, so I'm going to admit 19 over the objection. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to look at exhibit... About five more minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to look at exhibit 16. Um, this was an email sent to me from Laura. Uh, and basically, in this, this is uh, Exhibit 16 and 17. They they are they came within the same email. Um, she stated that uh, this is the photo I'm going to use. It was a picture of um, two uh, clo piece of clothing saying Ecker Twins Twins coming February 2024. Uh, in this email, she said, a "Surprise! I can't wait for the arrival of these two next Valentine's Day." Which I don't know how she would you know know that she'd be due on February 14th. Um, but she stated then that on a more serious note, their father said he wants nothing to do with the process. He has blocked me. Tag him and let him know what you think. Um, so she, this was a threatening email where she was stating, um, if you want option A, and option A had to deal with dating her. She said, I will not post this. I'm just looking for support during this incredibly overwhelming time. And when was this sent? Um, I see that it says yesterday at 2.23. So uh, this, I wish there was a time stamp, but I believe this was Earlier, this was probably three months ago. Um, it was towards the beginning. Again, this has been five months ongoing, but this is probably three months uh, in at this point. This was before she had um, she had not leaked the story to the son at this point. Any other objections to 16 or 17? Objections to both for the same reasons uh, stated before, Your Honor. All right. I'll admit 16 and 17. Thank you. Um, I'd like to focus on uh, Exhibit 21. So uh, this shows a process server um, that Ms. Owens hired to serve me papers when I went down to Miami uh, to visit my cousin. 
Um, she knew that I was down there, and she had researched uh, women that I had interacted with or expressed interest with in the past, found that these two women lived in Miami. I didn't even know that Mrs. Jessica Gerard even lived in Miami, um, but I did not go to see either of them. But she had a process server try to serve papers to both of those um, residents, which I felt was very harassing in nature, as these individuals I have not been in contact with for quite some time. And I believe it was a display of um, power on Ms. Owen's part to, again, harass me and try to uh, get other people involved. Um, and, and so I'd like to admit this because I felt that, again, it was very harassing in nature that I had a process server trying to serve papers to individuals that I had expressed interest to in the past. It didn't seem necessary uh, as um, we could have just served the papers in Scottsdale. Yes, Your Honor, in any, almost any lawsuit, there needs to be service of process. That's how a lawsuit begins. That is for personal service, that the, the court has jurisdiction over the person. Um, nobody likes to be served papers. I don't think that this shows any amount of harassment. This was the process server emailing Mr. Eckerd, not there, my client isn't even on this email. All right, so uh, I'm going to sustain the objection as the 21. I'm not going to admit that. Um, I guess I can just submit this last one. Uh, exhibit 35, this was sent, um, sent on Friday of last week. I took a screenshot of it. Uh, this is after uh, Ms. Owens filed a order of protection against me. Um, and as, as, as I've never threatened her, I believe I have not ever threatened her, uh, but yet she uh, continued to contact me. So this was um, I thought, again, she was asking to um, go to the sonogram appointment, uh, and it would mean a lot to me if you would go. Um, again, I think all things considered, the fact that she's still, um, you know, I had no interest in wanting to meet up, and she was still sending me these messages after she uh, placed an order of protection against me. Uh, I think it just more so shows that um, the reason she sent in the order of protection, it would not make sense as to why she would want to meet up after that point. Again, this felt threatening uh, because just another message that she continued to send. Um, and I just didn't, again, I did not want to any of these emails come over to me. Any objection? Yeah, Your Honor, same objections as before, um, but at the same time, this is outside the scope of even this petition. And I do think we're restricted to kind of the petition since this has happened after the petition was filed. I will sustain an objection and not admit 35. Dr. if there's any other testimony you want to give as well, just outside of exhibits uh, that you want to let the court know, you can also provide other testimony. Yes. Um, is this the time for me to ask for a request from the court or as, as far as what I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but um, you well, can. Uh, again, I just I guess I'll say this. Um, and you'll have a time to do a closing, but if you have additional evidence or anything else you want to present, just that's what I'm looking for you to do. But if you have a specific question, you can ask that as well. Okay. Um, I guess I just want to yeah, state, um, well, maybe this will be better for my closing statement. I guess I don't have any questions at the moment. Okay. And then whatever evidence you wanted to present. Um, I mean, uh, for the sake of time, I know that I, I only I ran out. I mean, I, I could try to submit the rest of these, but I, I think I've ran out of time. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, you were Laura's real estate agent, is that correct? I was for a brief period of time, correct. Okay. And that was back in, that was earlier this year, is that correct? Correct. All right. And Back in around May of 2023, you and Laura had become intimate, is that correct? Correct. And since then, Laura has made it known to you or has claimed that she's been pregnant, is that correct? That's correct. And you have, even until this day, you've refused to believe that Laura is pregnant, is that correct? 
I, I would say that's not correct. I, I mean, I did question, yes, if she was, but I have tried to give her um, every, every possible option or ability to prove to me that she's pregnant. She's not allowed me to talk to any of her medical examiners um, that have done, administered their quote-unquote ultrasounds that she has done. Okay, and she isn't required to give you her health information, is that correct? Uh, I personally would say that when she's claiming I'm the father, that uh, the father of her alleged children should have, be able to have access to her medical records, with preg especially when it's pertaining to pregnancy. But it is true that at the beginning, back in maybe May or June, you did not believe that Laura was in fact pregnant. Is that correct? Yes, I have questions if she's pregnant. Okay. Correct. You have exchanged emails or text messages with Laura indicating that you did want her to get an abortion. Is that correct? I have stated that if my preference were to not have, was to not have children with her, but it was ultimately her choice and I was not going to pressure her. And those were communications that you had back and forth with Laura in text messages. Is that correct? Yes, we had interacted via email early on. Okay. But had you also interacted with their in-text messages? Uh, yes, as I evidence I've submitted, there is me. I have, did respond to her early messages. Now, you agreed to meet with Laura or have Laura come to your house to do a pregnancy test. Is that correct? That's correct. And Laura did come to your house to do or go to your house to do a pregnancy test. Correct. Yes, she ended up doing when she was when she was there. Yes. Okay, and that test showed that she was in fact pregnant. Is that correct? It showed that she had a CG in her blood. Yes. Okay, and when you all agreed to do that, you were communicating back and forth with Laura. Correct. Correct. She didn't just show up at your house. Correct. Correct. You questioned then whether, not only whether she was actually pregnant, but then whether you were the father. Is that correct? That is correct. And Laura went out of her way to schedule various paternity tests to show that you were the father. Is that correct? For that, I would say she was claiming she scheduled them. She did schedule a few, but then whenever I did not agree to her stipulation, she canceled them. Okay. So she scheduled a few, is that correct? I believe she did, yes. Okay. And it was her that did the scheduling, is that correct? Until I scheduled one, yes, that she and I took recently, which okay. came back little to no fetal DNA presence. Okay. The communication between you and Laura for the scheduling, was that through email? Uh, yes, I mostly it was over email at that point, correct. Some of it was through text messages, is that correct? I had asked for her to schedule them via text. Yes, um, I believe that, yes, I mean, we, I, as you saw in the exhibits, I had asked her if she would do it without stipulations. Okay, and so there was communication back and forth between you and Laura, is that correct? Office, but yeah, it's very limited overall considering the frequency of the messages she sent. But yes, at certain points, I was trying to work this out with her. Okay. Now, the text messages and emails that you've provided to the court today, those are not all of the text messages from you. And of course, they're not all of the text messages from her. Is that correct? That's correct. And same thing with the emails. That's not all the emails from her. It's not all the emails from you. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I will not be able to submit. In the, in I don't have a question. Time. Now, Laura, you at some point in time stopped responding to Laura, whether it be through text messages or emails. Is that correct? Yes. And this is also around the time when Laura was trying to schedule the paternity test. Is that correct? I stopped responding, and then she started to state she wanted to schedule a test just as, as a she, – uh, she was claiming she wanted to, but she would never, whenever it came down to me wanting to schedule it with no stipulations. So I stopped responding at a certain point when I realized that she would always keep adding the stipulations in. Okay. From that point forward, she, she was making claims she wanted to schedule them. It didn't mean anything. She had already proven that she had no interest in actually following through. 
Was there times that you're aware of that Laura hired an attorney to help schedule the paternity testing? Uh, I had spoken with one of her attorneys at one point, and they had shown me the ultrasound that, is, that I had admitted here, and I asked for them to subpoena the records or to get the re records um, from that ultrasound. She would not provide it, and then stated that I asked her if she would schedule without stipulations, and the lawyer told me she would not. Okay. Laura paid for you to have or to do some sort of blood test to determine, uh, to do your part of the paternity testing. Is that correct? As I referenced in my exhibits, she did make a payment, and then when I, I would not do it without the stipulations, she canceled. She canceled or you canceled? Canceled. Somebody canceled my portion. It was not me. It was I. They called in and tried to cancel my portion. In which case, I found that out, and that's what led to me scheduling it and then going online to make a statement so everyone knew that I was trying to do this paternity test. I did not cancel it, though. Absolutely not. Somebody called in and canceled it for me because our names were under the same test. You're stating that somebody canceled a paternity test on your behalf, and it wasn't you, and you didn't authorize that? That is correct. Now, you and Laura have an active family court case together, is that correct? That is correct. And it was Laura that filed that case against you, is that correct? That's correct. And this family court case is in regard to paternity, is that correct? In regard to a parenting plan. She filed for a parenting plan. Okay. The children that have not been proven. All right. And you're not represented by an attorney, is that correct, in that family court case? That is correct. Okay. And is it your understanding that she, at least at, uh, at the time, wasn't represented by an attorney in that case? I just understand the, the purpose of that question, but I don't. I don't. So I've talked, I've spoken with lawyers. Um, I, I believe that she filed in that case, though, as I'm uh, representing herself. Okay. And the court ordered that you guys meet and confer. Is that correct? For an early resolution conference virtually, but not to meet in person. That was never sent to me, although she claims that the court mandated that. To resolve different issues prior to that conference, is that correct? The court did not mandate that. I never was told by the court. I was told to show up to an early resolution conference. She said that they were supposed to, if able to, apparently the court asked that individuals try to resolve all matters, but I had no interest in doing that because I did not trust her if we were to meet up one-on-one, -on -one, what she would accuse me of. Okay, but she emailed you or texted you in regard to trying to resolve those issues before showing up to the early resolution conference. Is that correct? Claim that we needed to meet up to discuss matters, what specifically I was not sure of. Now, you have accused Laura multiple times of lying that she is pregnant. Is that correct? That's correct. And you've done that online. Is that correct? Uh, I, I believe in a video, again, I never once mentioned her name. I believe I may have said I questioned whether or not she was pregnant. Okay, so you insinuated that she was lying. Is that correct? Uh, I believe she was lying, yes. And the different media outlets that you have you spoken to media outlets about this? I early on um, provided statements to a couple of outlets to state that um, I did not believe that I was a father, and um, that I was hoping to um, do a prenatal paternity test in order to prove whether or not I in fact was. Okay, and up until recently, you hadn't done. Uh, paternity test, is that correct? Yes, but that was because of Ms. Owens was not willing to do one as I asked her to as far back as four months ago. Okay, so you're blaming Ms. Owens for not doing a paternity test, is that correct? Correct. And that's why you wouldn't do a paternity test? I could not do one because she would not do one. She, she would not do it unless I were to date her. Those were her stipulations. Now, you indicated that you spoke to the media about this and they published those statements online. Is that correct? 
there were a few outlets, yes, that published my response. Yes. And the results of the paternity test are not resolved, is that correct? I was told that little to no fetal DNA was present on the first sample and that she needed to submit another sample. So the results are not in yet, is that correct? I, yes, I suppose that is correct. Now, you had indicated that Laura had blocked you um, several times. Or, sorry, I apologize. You had indicated during your testimony that you had blocked Laura several times um, in various uh, from various numbers. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But you were in communication with Laura this entire time since May. Is that correct? Uh, I would not say that's correct. I was not in communication the entire time. Um, if I were to be able to show all of the exhibits, um, I probably responded to maybe 5% of what she has sent to me. Okay. I'd like to take a look at Exhibit 4. Uh, plaintiff's Exhibit 4. You had indicated that, that, that this was a text message uh, from Laura to you. Is that correct? And you had responded to Laura in this in this uh, particular text message. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Is that the same thing with Exhibit 12 and Exhibit and Exhibit 13? You had responded to Laura after she she messaged you. If there's a text bubble, as I'm trying to look here for the sake of second time, if there's a text bubble, then yeah, I mean I was the responder in those messages. Okay. And. In all of these text messages that you submitted to the court, did you ever one time tell Laura to stop texting you? Multiple times I asked her to stop communicating with me. Okay. I'm asking in the exhibits you submitted to the court and in your testimony, you not one time ever said that Laura stopped texting you or stopped communicating with me, did you? I'd have to go back to the exhibits that I directly submitted, but I've asked multiple times for her to cease communication. Um, and now you're asking for me specifically if I stated this in the text messages that I can absolutely confirm. I've asked her multiple times to start responding to me. Okay. And I have evidence to prove that, maybe not on these text messages alone, but again, I have 500 exhibits that could have been submitted. And isn't it true that you indicated Laura threatened to go to the media regarding this, correct? Yeah. You had indicated that Laura had spoken to you via email or text message that she was willing to go to the media to discuss what was going on between you and her. Is that correct? Yeah, she stated she was going to go to the media, yes. And didn't you email or text Laura indicating, go ahead, essentially, go ahead, you can talk to the media? Um, I believe I did state that at one point um, because my reasoning for that was because I knew she was trying to threaten me and scare me by going to the media, and I did not want to give her the um, the joy or whatever you want to call it of, of knowing that she was affecting me. So I, I just stated, sure, if you want to go to the media, go to the media. But I was not giving her permit. I guess I wasn't agreeing to it. I just knew it was inevitable. She was threatening me. So you consented to it? I wouldn't say I, I, I wouldn't say I consented to it. I, I, I wanted to resolve this privately very, very early on multiple times. And as I exhibited, as I sent some of these exhibits show, I was trying to, um, she had threatened to go to the media multiple times. And uh, at that point, after she had threatened me multiple times, I stated, go ahead, um, just simply because I knew that she was going to continue to threaten me and she would eventually go public. No further questions. And you have an opportunity to provide rebuttal testimony if you want to, based on what he's asked you. If you have anything else you wanted to help clarify. Yeah. Um, you. Again, I think uh, you know what what he's trying or what he's attempting to, to show is that there was continuous communication throughout. Um, and and I believe again this is a matter of frequency, my messages versus hers. Uh, I was continuously trying to solve this matter. Uh, and the few times that I did reach out, I was trying to 
come to a conclusion. Again, uh, had I had actually been the father and the prenup attorney test was done four months ago, um, you know, I was willing to take the test back then and willing to then um, move forward from that point. Uh, but this individual, Ms. Owens, never had any interest in settling this matter. Um, she was, this is, this is, again, as I um, had referenced in our prior cases, uh, this individual, I believe, again, this is just my opinion, but, um, you know, harasses individuals into dating her, um, and when they do not want to, then she uh, starts to say that she's not willing to take a test, or um, at one point it was, I'll take Plan B or the abortion pill if you agree to date. Uh, so there's always stipulations around that. Um, but the few times where I did respond to her, uh, it was for me trying to get a prenatal paternity test on the books because I was wanting to be able to um, prove that I was not, in fact, uh, the father. As I, as again, uh, through all of this, um, I just want to make this statement. Uh, uh, Ms. Owens has not been able to prove that she is five months pregnant with twins. A positive HCG test, you can manipulate HCG levels. Um, you know, these, son these sonograms don't have a report with them either. Um, and so no doctor uh, and, and has ever stood behind these tests. Uh, and, and, and been willing to state that, that she is in fact pregnant with, five months pregnant with um, two, with twins. And so... Um, no, no, I'm going to object right now. This sounds like a, a closing argument as opposed to testimony. I, she, Over rules, go ahead. So, I, again, my, the whole thing for me and is, is I've been trying to... Um, to trying to quash this. I've been trying to come to a solution. I've never wanted this to be public. I never wanted like this to get out there and be such a big deal, but this individual did and made sure that it got out. Um, and uh, I would just, again, um, I, I would like the order of protection and Johnson harassment. I would like that because um, this individual is an aggressor and if she, she will not um, continue to come after me, or she will continue to come after me unless I cut off communication. And so this is, um, whether or not I responded, it's the sheer frequency of unwanted messages that she sent me. Uh, it's not, it is that I do and not. And tell me what that is. Tell me what you believe is the, the number of messages you've received. I, I believe in, in that doc, I believe she has sent me at this point four to 500 mass emails, probably. That's over what period of time? Over five months. Um, she, she, and is that including email and text messages, or uh, yes, email? she predominantly has in her, uh, sent me emails, um, uh, and, and most of the uh, it was mostly yes, email, not text message that, that she's been sending me. Um, the messages that you provided as exhibits, a lot of them were text messages. Yes, and so. Um, the, the other messages that you were receiving, I think Exhibit 1, that big picture of all those, you know, emails or whatever, but you, your testimony is that primarily she's been communicating you with by email, and it, it, tell me more about the nature of the, of the emails that she's been sending. Yeah, so um, as some of the exhibits I, uh, I, I admitted today, um, these are just the ones that I felt, again, I wanted to, I know that we're here for injunction and harassment, so I was focusing on messages that pertain to harassment itself. Um, but the rest of the messages, uh, again, were very repetitive. I think a lot of this is encapsulated as far as what she was sending me. Um, she would send me uh, visual images to try to harass me. She, saw, she noticed that when uh, she sent visual images, I became uh, emotional, and then she would send more messages on top of that to try to aggravate me. Um, Again, uh, she, I was not, I did not, was not able to submit all of, of the emails because I would have submitted probably five to 600 exhibits. And so for the sake of time, um, I, I chose uh, what I felt was specific to harassment itself. Um, but I would say that, again, the first exhibit that I submitted, um, it just shows you with the folders the uh, dates um, and how often she was sending me emails. And it was just, every day, every day, or every other day for five months. And I believe that this individual, again, her whole, um, she, she tries to overwhelm individuals um, through constantly messaging and trying to convince them of this reality that she has created. 
Uh, but again, um, as I will have to uh, go to court tomorrow um, with the family court, she has not been able to prove she is five months pregnant with twins. And I continue to reiterate that because she has falsified medical records, I believe, and she's also lied under oath. And I believe these are criminal offenses, and I believe that this individual continues to do this in court, and that is why I've tried to draw parallels with the other cases because um, she's done this multiple times, and I believe that she'll continue to do it. So I am trying to, for one, stop her from communicating with me, but I'm also trying to bring to light that this individual continues to do similar uh, repeated patterns of behavior, and uh, it has been extremely stressful. I have been very, very, very stressed out by receiving these constant influx of messages that could have all been false had she had just took a prenatal paternity test all the way back at, at, at the earliest time that we were able to do so. I, none of this had to have happened. Didn't have to take it this far. But the point, is, like what I'm, the point I'm making, is she never actually wanted to take it until I went public and stated I signed up for a prenatal paternity test. Now she needs to schedule her part. I then placed that upon her to schedule her portion. And then, as people knew that she had to schedule it, she then scheduled. Um, but the test came back little to no fetal DNA present, which would track with her not actually being five months pregnant with twins, because if she had twins, then there would be fetal DNA present. She claims that there was an issue with the sample. She then submitted another sample that got caught up in Tennessee, or wherever. It didn't make its way there. I, I, can, I can give my own opinion on what I believe happened, and I believe the message may have been intercepted, but I do not know that. Um, but I know that when she tests again, it's going to come back the same thing. I do not believe, at this point, I'm not technically questioning that she's not pregnant because I do believe she may have gotten pregnant to corroborate her story, but I 1,000% she does not believe that she's not five months pregnant with my twins. And that ultrasound that I have, I, she would not call the facility when, we, when I met with the mediator at the early resolution conference. She would not get on the phone and make a phone call to just state, did I, in fact, come to this facility? because I believe she never went to that facility and that is a falsified medical record. All right. All right. Uh, anything, Mr. Lopez, do you want to present some testimony? Uh, yes, Your Honor, and before I present, um, how, how are we on time? Um, fairly short. How much time do we get? I, I would say 20 minutes. Okay. Could you please remind me when we're at five minutes? I appreciate it. Thank you, Your Honor. So, um, Laura, how did you first meet Clayton? Um, he was my realtor. Um, I contacted his agency because they specialize in creative finance, and then I got connected with Clayton. Um, and I and made, I'm sorry, go on. Did you become intimate with Clayton at some point? Yes, I did. And was it Clayton that, um, I guess, made you pregnant, or is it the two of you that created these unborn children? Yes, there's absolutely no possibility at all they are anybody else's. There's no chance. And you're testifying under oath today, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Under penalty of perjury? Yes. Now, when did you find out that you were pregnant? Um, on June 1st, I found out. Okay. And did you ever let Clayton know? Yes, I let Clayton know on June 1st that I was pregnant. How did you let him know? Um, well, I had I had gone to urgent care to get the pregnancy confirmed because I figured he wouldn't believe me. Um, and then afterwards, I sent him a text telling him that I was pregnant. And how did he react? Um, he said that if he was found to be the father, that one of us would get 100% custody. He wouldn't do joint custody. Um, he told me, or it will be put up for adoption, was what he said initially. Um, and then he said that he might even move out of state with, um, with the children. And so I think it's understandable that I would be panicky about, um, you know, what exactly he wanted done and why I was so into getting a parenting plan before they're born. Okay. Now, let me just stop. This communication that you were having with Clayton, how, how was that communication? Through text, emails? How were you communicating with him? Um, mainly through text. And was he texting you back? Um, yes, he was texting me back through about uh, June 20th. 
And prior to you becoming pregnant, was it your understanding that Clayton wanted to have a family? Yes, it was. Okay. And were you doing the things that you could do to inform him about the pregnancy and what was happening with it? Yes, I was. Okay. Every step were of the way. You, what were those things that you were doing to inform Clayton? Um, well, I invited Clayton and his family to my first sonogram with, um, you can't deny that I wasn't pregnant. I got into a specialist, um, a parent, perinatologist, um, because I have epilepsy. Um, and that was my first appointment. I know we have that in evidence as well, um, that he, he was invited. I even told his family if they wanted to come that I would, I would change the, the date for them. And what month are we talking about here? What months are we in when you're talking about these different things, the communication between you and Clayton? Um, July, but in, because that's when I found out I was pregnant with twins, but in June, um, that was when I went over to Clayton's house and took the pregnancy test in front of him. Now, during this time when you first informed Clayton, was it clear to you whether Clayton believed that you were pregnant or did he not believe you or what was that conversation? Um, I know that what he wrote initially was basically that he believed it and because that's why he got into the custody stuff. But um, really throughout this whole thing, I, I would say the theme has definitely been um, that he doesn't believe I'm pregnant. And I believe that's because he just doesn't want to take responsibility. Okay. Now, you indicated there was a time that uh, you went to his house. What was that in regard to? Um, I went to his house because he invited me over on, I, I believe it was June 17th. Um, he invited me over saying he wanted to, uh, to talk. And um, I agreed to go over to his house. And once I got out there, I told him I would love to order a pregnancy test. And he said he already had one. Um, so then I took the pregnancy test in front of him. I peed on the stick in front of him. Um, it showed up positive pretty much right away. And he just threw away the, the stick and said he didn't need to see more. Um, and then we talked about uh, what what would happen for us um, down the line. And he said he would, you know, consider figuring out dating or w whatever, because I, I don't think it's unreasonable to want to see if things can work with the father of your, what I now know is kids. And let me just stop you. Now, um, were Clayton's intentions regarding the pregnancy and the unborn children ever clear at any point as far as what he wanted to do? Uh, no. Okay. No, so still there was one. And uh, when we say over, uh, so is this over weeks or even months that we're talking? Yes. Yes, okay. over, the, over a month. Okay. So was there a point when he wanted you to have an abortion? Yes, there was. Was there a point where he wanted to give the kids away for adoption? Uh, yes, there was, and all of that's in text messages. Okay. Was there a point where then he didn't want anything to do with the kids and you have sole custody? Yes. Okay. And these are communications that you're having with Mr. Eckerd through text messages? Yeah, th those were through text. Um, what about emails? Um, emails started later on um, after we had the, the day after we had the conversation where I went to his house and took the pregnancy test. Um, he, he and I were having a good conversation. Like he messaged me in the morning. He said he wanted to be intimate that weekend, which I also have that text. And then an hour later with, without me responding, he said, God told him that we were not meant to be together. And he took that back and then he blocked me and I've pretty much been blocked since then. Okay. So you would admit that you knew that Clayton had blocked you at some point. Is that right? Um, yes. Via text. Yes, I did. Okay. And he but told then me would there be that was, Go ahead. That's what I want to say is he told me to email him. Okay. But were there times that even after he blocked you, he would then communicate with you through text? Yes. He'd okay. block and unblock. So sometimes he would block you, but then he would unblock you? Yes. And I think if you uh, go to Exhibit 1, you can see some of the text messages that he sent to me. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, Defense Exhibit 1, Your Honor, um, if I may. What is Exhibit 1? Your, uh, okay, well, it's one. not Exhibit 1 because obviously we have all of the things exhibit. So you need to refer to the exhibit as it is on the exhibit worksheet, which I'm assuming is the first defense exhibit I have is 40. Oh, 
Okay, defense exhibit 40. Uh, I don't, I was only given 37, 38, but 39. I don't see any other exhibits. It's titled blatant, uh, cruel, and threatening text to me. Your Honor, those are exhibits that we had uploaded to the court, uh, but I don't. Were they uh, provided to Ms. Harker? Um, I gave them to him on a flash drive right before the hearing. Okay. Stop. I did upload them, and it said it was successful, and that was on Friday or Thursday. Okay, Ms. Allen, thank you. The court has the exhibits. My issue is that Mr. Eckert doesn't have the exhibits. So I, I guess Ms. I, could, I, I mean, I could show them sure. on my computer, Your Honor. How, how we believe that he would be able to view those. Well, I have them on my computer, Your Honor. I gave him a USB with the exhibits on it prior to this hearing. Um, okay. I mean, prior to the hearing, like when you came into court today. Yeah, I gave him the exhibits on a thumb drive. We had submitted the exhibits um, as the court wanted. I gave them to him electronically on a thumb drive, and I have them on my computer. I don't have them printed out. Well, I guess I'm not sure how we're going to... I have them right here on my computer. Oh, well. I mean, I understand, but you're just going to show him them on your computer while you're talking about them? Is that what you're trying to do? I, I I'll let him... I'll let them access them with my computer, yeah. Okay. Thank They're you. all in order. If you're saying it's Exhibit 40, then uh, I guess we'll start there. Okay, Mr. Ecker? Uh I was just going to say, I mean, yeah, he gave me a thumb drive 20 minutes before we started this case, so I, I don't have my laptop with me. It wasn't, nothing was submitted to me um, until today. I don't understand how... And I don't have any of it, so how can we bring it to light when it was never sent to me until 20 minutes before the case? And I don't have a computer to plug the flash drive into. Your Honor, and, and if I may, there are no disclosure requirements in these types of cases. The rules of protective order procedure or injunction against harassment, they don't, there are no, there are no disclosure requirements. Despite that, again, I gave him a flash drive before for today. I have the exhibits on my computer. He has access to them. Okay. Well, the, the logistics of that seem uh, extremely difficult to me when we're at 4.30 already. So we're already an hour and a half into the hearing. And so if we're starting to look at exhibits uh, on your computer while you're trying to ask questions of her about them, I, I find that's going to be a bit of a, a, a difficult issue that I'm having with, with us trying to logistically all do that. Uh, what does the court propose? I, I mean, I, I, I... Again, I can show on my computer. The exhibits are here. I have them in order. I, I mean, I, I almost think we need to reset for another, you know, half hour of hearing where you guys can, you can provide the exhibits or he can have an opportunity to at least view the ones that you provided on, this, on your uh, flash drive. And then we can discuss them as... If, uh, I mean, we, we could do that, Your Honor, um, but then I'd like to proceed with the rest of the case uh, just to use up this time, and then we could do that at another time if we need to. I mean, that's fine. I'm just saying I think that exhibits issues, uh, we need to try to resolve that. But if you have additional questions you want to ask her, that's fine. Okay. So were there, was there a conversation between you? Uh, Glenn was responding back to text messages that you had with him, correct? Correct. Okay. And same thing with emails during this time? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't like he stopped responding. And I also do have on mail track that Clayton opened every single one of the emails. I know he said he didn't, but I have proof he opened every one. Okay. And the different exhibits that Clayton had admitted into evidence during his case, those were not the full text message conversations or emails uh, between you and and Clayton, is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. He was, in fact, texting you back and emailing you back. Yes, that's correct. And during the entire five months or uh, since 
uh, I believe it's May that's indicated in the petition, has there been one time that Clinton has told you, please stop texting me, please stop emailing me, or something along those lines? No. In fact, you had asked Clayton um, whether it was okay if, if you went to the media regarding this. Is that right? Correct. And what did he say? He said, um, if you can tell, I'm completely unbothered by it. And I went to the media the next day. And I, I never wanted to go to the media. I just wanted to, to make a parenting plan. Okay. Was there a time that um, you had to hire an attorney? Yes. And what was that in regard to? Um, I thought it would be easier for the two of us to communicate to try to get that parenting plan with an attorney and for us to avoid having to go to court. Okay. Was there a time that you tried to do paternity testing with Clayton? Yes, absolutely. Clayton was very unresponsive to that. Um, and I paid $750 in August to have the testing. I asked him to email the lab with a, to schedule his time because I already had a time scheduled, um, and he never emailed the lab. So that's why it was it was canceled. He had, you know, more than a week to email the lab to tell them uh, a, a date and time, and he he didn't do that. How many times did you schedule paternity testing? Um, I paid for it once, but um, I was in communication with the lab. About RabGen, which is the lab that Clayton shows about scheduling um, countless times. Okay. And did he ever do any paternity testing, or did you do any paternity testing? Um, not until recently. Okay. And during this, you and Clayton were texting or emailing back and forth regarding scheduling of the paternity testing? Y yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and I did have to provide prenatal paternity testing by the court. Um, I was doing it for Clayton's sake. I could have waited until they're born. Okay. And was that the main form of communication between you and Clayton? A hundred percent. Everything was about paternity and pregnancy. There was, that was it. But was it through emails and text messages? Correct. That's Except how the two of you June. decided to communicate? Uh, what was that? That's how the two of you decided to communicate? Yes, was primarily through um, through email. You said something uh, except for something. Oh, except for in, in June um, when we met up. Other than that, it was just by texting and emailing. All right. And it came to a point where Clayton wasn't agreeing to uh, or, or he didn't want to create a family plan. Was that your understanding? Yes, that was. And what did you want from Clayton? Um, I wanted to create a parenting plan because I was so unsure about, since he'd given me so many different options for what was going to happen, um, I really wanted it nailed down before I give birth as to uh, what custody was going to be. And I wanted to see if there would be a possibility for us to do joint custody, not to be dating, but just because I think that would be the best thing for the kids to not have 100% and 100%, or just 100%, I'm sorry. Okay, and that wasn't possible to do prior to hiring an attorney and then eventually filing a family law court case. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, you tried to make that happen. Is that right? That's right, yes. That was the and whole point. The, that was the point of the communication via text message and emails, is that right? That was entirely the point. Okay, when did you file the family law case? I believe it was August 1st. And was there a point in time that you had to meet up with Clayton because of that case? Yes. And what did you need to do before that hearing? Um, well, there were two things. I filed a motion where we were supposed to have a good faith consultation and uh, Clayton just didn't get back to me about that. Um, and then we were supposed to get together before the early resolution conference to see if we could resolve the issues or resolve some of the issues without um, having to involve the court, I guess. Did that, uh, and, and when you received that information from the court regarding those things you needed to do, to do before court, was it your understanding that you were supposed to meet up physically? 
Um, yes, it yes, it absolutely was. It specifically said meet up, and he got the same he got the same information that I did. Okay, so you were trying to meet up with him physically, um, due to what the court had ordered. Correct. And you communicated that through text messages and emails. Correct. Okay. Now, did that meeting ever happen? No, it did not. Okay. Who was trying to make it happen? Um, I was the whole time. Now, did you know what the penalty would be if you didn't meet up? I was just going to say that I did not know what the penalty would be if we didn't meet up, and I didn't want to face any penalties or get in trouble with the court when I was trying to abide by the rules. Um, yeah, that was, that was all I was trying to do. And the family court case between you and Glenn, that's still active, right? Correct. You guys are both unrepresented, is that right? Yeah, correct. So you're forced to communicate with him regarding some of these issues at least, is that right? Yes, absolutely. Scheduling and, and meet and confer, things like that? Yeah. Now, there was a paternity test that was done, is that right? Correct. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I took the paternity test um, on, uh, I don't know, it was, it was earlier this month, I believe. Um, and it came back with within the sample, there was little to no fetal DNA, which I was told specifically by um, the guy who heads this lab that the testing was ongoing, but that was not a, a conclusive test and that he needed to have me do a retest. Um, and so I, but after that, I said, is Clayton aware of this, that the testing results are not final? And he said, yes. And I do have that um, as an exhibit of him on the phone telling me that. But despite that, Clayton went public and said, uh, we, we also have that exhibit as well, um, where Clayton boisterously ex said that um, there was little to no fetal DNA and I wasn't pregnant, which, incited a tremendous amount of harassment towards me. Um, and then um, after the sample... Let me stop you really quick. Oh, sorry. Stop you really quick. Now, during the paternity testing, um, did you have to communicate back and forth with Clayton regarding results or what was going on? I tried to, and he would not respond to me about it. To and is that when he went online? Uh, what, what was that? And is that when he went online to... Uh, to indicate what the results were? Yes. Yeah, and that's what... Precipitated. There were no results? Uh, yeah, there were no results. Testing was ongoing. Is it still ongoing? Um, yes, it is still ongoing. They just needed a sample that wasn't so diluted, and so um, they asked me to come back. I took a, a test a couple weeks ago. I think it's crazy that Clayton's acting like I somehow intercepted that um, sample in Tennessee. It ended up I guess getting stuck in Tennessee um, and getting delivered in two days instead of one to the lab, which meant the sample was no good. And then I went today and I took, uh, I gave blood again. But this, that's my third time giving blood. It's not my fault, um, <laughs> you know, at all. Now, aside, aside from texting or emailing Clayton regarding the pregnancy, the paternity test, um, the family court case, was there, was there anything else that you had emailed or texted Clayton? Not a single thing, and he knows that as well. What about the post online? Um, well, that was related to the, the paternity. Um, I did message him after asking him to take that off when I started getting people telling me to kill myself, um, and people were posting terrible reviews on my, my podcast. I was getting horrible messages on my Instagram. I had to deactivate that, um, and I begged him, please take this down. The results are not back. Here, here's, here's Brett from Ravgen explaining that you know that the test results aren't back. You can't be posting this kind of stuff um, and inciting harassment against me. And is that because uh, your understanding Clayton's fans or Clayton's followers were harassing you online? Yes, and they were naming me in his comments and giving my, uh, my handle out, my Instagram handle out. Okay, and those were because of Clayton's posts? entirely because of Clayton's post. Um, and then on, on Reddit, I mean, I, I can't even go into the, uh, what people have said about me on Reddit as a result of his post, which 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm clearly pregnant and I, um, you know, will do anything to prove the, the paternity. Um, and so he, it's just all of this information that he's put out there that's false has been so upsetting to me. But you had reached out to Clayton regarding those posts and asked him to take it down after you were receiving these harassing emails or messages online? Correct. Okay. Now, was there a time that you had reached out to um, somebody who Clayton was going to speak, uh, somewhere where he was going to speak? Yes, I did. And what Five was minutes. that? Five minutes. And what was that? Um, I contacted them because I was feeling suicidal as a result of, of Clayton's mm -hmm. action towards me. And I'm sure, you know, I'm hormonal because of the pregnancy and not knowing, you know, what the plan is going to be going forward. But I felt that it's strongly in my heart. This was not to harass Clayton. I just felt that if Clayton was the kind of person who would not respond to me, knowing I was pregnant with his kids, um, then there's no way Clayton would respond to somebody else who reached out to him saying they were in need and that they were suicidal. Um, and uh, Okay, let me just stop you. We have about three minutes. Okay. So Clayton had brought up instances of other cases that you're involved with with other individuals. Are, okay. is, the, okay. is the current case that you're involved with Clayton with similar to any of the other cases that he's brought Absolutely. up in his exhibit? No. Okay. And um, that's an ongoing case. Is that right? Um, correct. It's been going on for two years, and that attorney dropped out of the case. Um, there was never an ultrasound presented to him. I was too early on, but but it was the pregnancy was proven to him by a nurse practitioner by tons of medical results. I can prove that all day long. Now, in the communication that you had with Clayton, were you ever trying to threaten him or harass him or annoy him in any way? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, I would think he would want a parenting plan as well. Okay. Um, your intent during this time was essentially to get the parenting plan then and get this all figured out before the unborn children are born. Yes, because I'm panicked about having twins and not knowing if he's even going to, you know, he, he specifically put on the, uh, that he didn't want to even be on the birth certificate and didn't want to give them his last name. So... Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. All right. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, stop here, and then we'll pick up, because you may have some questions still for her about the exhibits. If we're going to uh, pick up again, I'm assuming that there may be some exhibits that you want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them. When I said no further questions, I just meant. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I understood. That's why. <laughs> um, so. Um, we're going to take a break now, and then, Mr. Eckert, you, you have the exhibits now in your possession. Is that correct? Obviously not. Oh, this, flash drives. So you have the flash drives, so you can do that uh, to see the exhibits, correct? Yes. Are we going to do this today? I, I would like to come to a conclusion today as far as what we're going, how we're going to proceed. Well, I, I don't think that we're going to be able to finish it today. It's already at our time. Uh, well, past our time, really, uh, for doing the trial, and we haven't done their exhibits yet, uh, and so I want to give them an opportunity to do their exhibits, and then, but I can try to find another date to see if we can come back and finish up the hearing. Do I have the ability to ask questions to her? You will once she gets done with her testimony, so I'm going to give them still time to do some of their exhibits and questions, but then you'll be able to cause it again, right? Okay. okay. Um, great. Is there a way to request for her to cease conversation uh, via all avenues until uh, this next hearing? Um, I, I don't know if there's a legal method for that. Um, I would just ask or make a request that she stop, or stop sending me messages. Um, I don't think that it's... Maybe it's, maybe it's just, I mean, I don't think it's worthwhile. It's not necessary, considering we're under, uh, you know, in a court case. I don't know if I can request that, but I would like to request that so that we can avoid having conversations outside of the court anyways. Well, Your Honor, they have an active family court case uh, right now, and, uh, I mean, 
this this type of hearing specifically is for what Mr. Uh, Mr. Eckert is asking for. That's why we're doing this hearing, and I don't think the court can order that my client not not saying that she would, but I'm just indicating that I don't think that this court can order her not to have any contact with them at this point. They have a family law case together. We actually have another uh, protective order hearing tomorrow. Um, I don't think the court has the power to do that, and I, I don't think that that request should be granted. I don't know that I can do that officially. I think that we can uh, note Ms. Owens hears your request and is asking that you cease any communication between now and uh, when we are able to redo our hearing unless there's a need to do that, you know, specifically for the family court matter. But I'm assuming you could communicate while at a court hearing versus outside of the hearing. So let me look for another date. Your Honor, is it possible for me to show Clayton that I am, in fact, pregnant because he hasn't seen me? No. I can do um, either the 26th to Thursday at 11, or I can do the 2nd at 11. Uh. 26 of this week, correct? Correct. Your, Your Honor, I'd be, be sorry, uh, I'd be requesting a second, if that's possible. I do have a criminal trial at 8.30 in the morning on the 26th that should be going all, at least all morning. Uh, that's out of, out of the Phoenix Municipal Court. Does November 2nd at 11 work for everybody then? I would request the 26th. Um, I don't want to drag this out longer than it needs to go. So if it were, if I would may, I mean, I would like to ask for the 26th so that we can forward in a quicker manner. And I understand. I just think if he has a court conflict, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to set it. Is, I know he has a court conflict. Is it possible, like, if we, if the court has time in the afternoon, like 3 o'clock on that Thursday night? I don't have another injunction trial that I'll okay. I guess, I guess my question is, is would your court case not have an end, end time? And if, if so, what is that time? Well, you, uh, just like in a criminal trial, it's usually three hours. So, I mean, it'd be kind of like this. So, it, she's uh, the court's saying 11. Is that what you said, Your Honor, like 11 or 11.30? 11 and 11 is when I can do it. Yeah, and driving from Phoenix to here, that's going to be at a minimum of 30 minutes. It, I wouldn't be able to finish that. Driving from Phoenix. But even assuming this started at 8:30. Okay, so it's supposed to. I'm just. I'm just. I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult. So you're, you're saying it's supposed to start at 8:30. That's correct. And it's scheduled for a three-hour time. Okay, so this had a yeah. time limit on it. So it's scheduled for three hours. Yes. Okay. Oh. So November 2nd at 11. We're going to pick up with uh, the exhibits, uh, defense exhibits, and then we'll. Um, allow Mr. Eckert to do cross-examination, and then Mr. Eckert would have the opportunity to present any rebuttal testimony if he thought that was needed. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may be seated. So good morning, I'm Commissioner Van Quistis, and um, we're here today in the matter of Clayton Ecker versus Laura Owens, GV2023053952. We will start by having everyone uh, state their name. Ms. Arena, do you want to begin? Good morning, Your Honor. Deandra Arena, counsel for the plaintiff, Clayton Eckerd. I'm also accompanied by Isabel Rainey from my office, who's an associate. 
Really, Mr. Hurd? Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Joshua Lopez representing Laura Owings, who's present before the court on Microsoft Teams. Okay, thank you, Ms. Owings. If you can state your name for me. Laura Owens. All right, thank you. All right, so this is the continuation of the contested hearing that the uh, previously held on October 24th. We also had a uh, notice of supplemental allegations uh, filed on October 31st. Um, Mr. Lopez, did you have an opportunity to review that? I, I did have an opportunity to review it, and I'd like to object on uh, a handful of different reasons, Your Honor. And if you'd like, I can present those now. Sure. Um, uh, so in regard to the amended amendment, well, in regard to the amendment, Your Honor, generally what happens in these order of protection hearings or injunction against harassment hearings, the petitioner is able to amend their petition at the beginning of the hearing before we've even started to determine what the scope of the hearing should be in regard to. Um, in this particular instance, Clayton did not have those in his petition, and we are now four-fifths of the way through his petition. Not only that, we've started the hearing, and he's ended his case in chief. We've already presented now. We, he's ended his testimony. He's ended entering his exhibits. We've moved on to the defense case in chief, and we're four-fifths. Again, we're four-fifths who will wait through the hearing. If this was all complete on the same day, he wouldn't get that opportunity to now amend his petition once we're already about to get to the end of the hearing. Just because he's now hired counsel doesn't give him a new opportunity to now amend the petition or add exhibits or add testimony. That would essentially be restarting this whole hearing over again, opening up, opening up uh, him, uh, the petitioner to be able to testify and then cross-examination, and then we would add a, get a chance to respond. That that wouldn't make any sense. It's too late now. He shouldn't be able to amend the petition at this point. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if you wanted to be heard. I do, Your Honor, and you can remain seated. Okay. It's better for the microphone anyway. So Whatever the court's preference is, of course. Um, Your Honor, with respect to our request to amend pursuant to Rule 38D, it's our position that we are able to amend at this point in time. Mr. Eckert has already provided testimony to support these new allegations in his case in chief. I believe the purpose of Rule 38 is in part for judicial economy. Uh, as the court's well aware, Mr. Eckert could proceed with filing an additional injunction against harassment at a later date. So we're really just doing this to ensure that the court has all the necessary allegations to proceed with making a determination in this hearing today. Um, I don't believe it's prejudicial whatsoever. Again, the testimony has already been provided to support these new allegations. And I think it's important that they be added so that the court can make a determination today and Mr. Eckert doesn't have to come back another time uh, with a new injunction. All right, thank you. Um, so when I first received it, I was concerned that we were you know, just adding stuff at the last second. I do think that these are just um, making more specific allegations that we did discuss that Mr. Lopez did have an opportunity to cross-examine him about because they were based on exhibits that were already admitted uh, and have already been admitted at this time. So I will allow the amended allegations at this time over the objection. Um, but I do have the same concerns Mr. Lopez expressed, which is we're not restarting this hearing. Um, and so the reason we reset it was so that um, Mr. Lopez could uh, ask Ms. Owen questions about their exhibits and admit whatever exhibits they were choosing to admit. Um, Mr. Eckford, I have given him an opportunity to give the option to review those exhibits prior to those being uh, admitted um, since he hasn't had an opportunity to see those. So where we are in the case is that Ms. Owens has testified primarily. Um, she is going to, uh, I guess, finish her testimony through whatever exhibits uh, Mr. Uh, Lopez wants to admit. Um, and then Mr. Eckert uh, would have the opportunity to cross-examine Ms. Owens because that uh, part he hadn't concluded yet. Um, and then we would do closing arguments. So that's kind of where we are. Okay. Uh, just a question, Your Honor. <clears throat> so I, I understand that you're going to allow the amended petition, um, but as far as the exhibits that the petitioner was trying to supplement, those are not being included. Is that correct? He's not getting the opportunity to admit additional exhibits. Is that correct? I mean, 
I guess the only thing I have about the exhibits, and I haven't seen that, I haven't reviewed all of those exhibits. The only thing I don't know about any of the exhibits is if they were in response to any of the exhibits that you have, I guess is what I, I'm not. And I, I guess I'm yeah. not sure either. Um, I guess that's the only thing I don't know, but um, at this point I do think his, uh, uh, you know, case has been basically concluded. Okay, uh, my final question is, as far as this hearing, I know it indicates in the minute entry it was, uh, we were just gonna go for 30 minutes. Is that 30 minutes um, altogether? Is that 30 minutes for us to present our exhibits? Is that broken down? I, don't, I just wanna make sure that I'm efficient with my time as best I can be. I mean, ideally we're here for 30 minutes, but I will extend it to 45 minutes to allow everyone to do closing. So the testimony portion, uh, and that would include cross-examination time, would be the 30 minutes. Okay, uh, is, is it, do I have 20 or is it like 15 and 15? I just wanna make yeah, sure. 20 is fine and then okay. 15, you know, 10 minutes to cross-examine if we need to and 15 minutes for closing or whatever, around okay. that time. All right, thank you. Okay, Ms. Rainey. Jerry, with respect to the exhibits, the supplementals, they are, for the most part, impeachment exhibits uh, with respect to Ms. Owens' prior testimony. So that's what they would be using for, and so I guess to answer the court's question, they are responsive to uh, defendant's exhibits here. So it would be utilized for cross-examination. That's what the supplemental exhibits are for. And, and I mean, I think you could use them for impeachment purposes if, they, if you felt they uh, would, would be relevant. So I just don't know if she has them to look at. To... They were disclosed to Mr. Lopez on, I believe, yesterday morning. And I was so... able to send them to my client, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. And Your Honor, one last thing. Um, while I understand and respect the court's decision regarding the courtroom being closed for live stream, I do have concerns regarding the fact that Ms. Owens is present virtually and who's present you know, in, in her household and who else is being able to listen to this. My client, unfortunately, with this hearing not being able to be live streamed is being precluded from having any of his family, friends, or any other persons that may want to listen in in support of him from being able to be, from being able to do that. So I would just ask that the court at least confirm with Ms. Owens that no one is present. I know this is hard to confirm, but uh, that's one of our concerns. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously his family can be here and I'm not sure he looks like he has some people here, but um, Ms. Owens, are, is anyone else with you? No, I'm in a casita by myself. Okay. I can also pay on if you want to see, if they want to see that nobody else is present, if that would be helpful. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so Mr. Lopez, you may proceed. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I want to turn the court's attention to, uh, and I'll jump around here a little bit, but Exhibit uh, 38. And Your Honor, do you have that available? It's a video. Uh, do you need a USB? You can hook up to that, to your computer so it to show it. I can make you a presenter. Uh, I can play it on my computer. Um, is that what you mean? Because I, I, can, I can bring it up there. Yeah, if you want to present it, um, then I can make you a presenter and you can, well, actually, because I think you need the little hookup thing to that. Yeah, there were some technical difficulties I want to either say last time or in a different court. I could try and do that. I don't have the... I don't know, Beth, if you can bring in those hookup things. What was that, Your Honor? I, I'm trying to get my JA to bring in the little extra extension thing that I think you need. I think they just hook up to the thing and then you can hook them up to the but then I think they need to hook up to that um, I don't have like is there another cord that needs to be plugged in I'm not 100% but it looks I think there's a cord already there maybe uh, there's maybe one for this um oh. Okay. 
I'm going to try to see an either A or B, but I'm If that doesn't work, then the other thing I can do is just plug it directly into my computer. Is it working? I mean, I need you a presenter, but I don't see anything currently. I just see you right now, but if you, I don't know if you want to try to. Okay, let me just try one more thing now. How about now, Yana? I mean, are you playing something or? Not yet, but I, I, I wasn't sure if it would just show me. Now I'm playing something. Not seeing anything. I still don't see you. Would it be okay if I just brought my computer up? Um, sure, as long as everyone can. Okay. Do anyone want to come up and see it too? Or? Okay, uh, Lori, do you have in front of you exhibit uh, that's marked 38? Um, I believe I know the one that you're referring to. As the, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's the video of my pregnant stomach. Is that correct? Yeah, is this an accurate video of you? Um, so it's actually not showing up at all on, um, on mine. Um, Your Honor, I can see you and I can see um, Mr. Eckerd's counsel, but I can't see my attorney or anything else. You can't see me? No, I if you can maybe just put it near the lap, we might be able to see it just on the screen I mean, there. She's saying she can't see all the participants. In she can the see you. Well, uh, can you see him now? I, I cannot. I can only see um, you and I can see Mr. Eckerd's counsel. I mean, I can maybe unmake you a presenter because I think maybe that's what happened is Can you see him now? Um, I cannot. Can you click something on your screen, like participant? Or is it a different view? Let me see. Okay, Show gallery, uh, no, nothing else. Um, nobody else is showing up. Okay. Despite you being able to see me, do yep. you have in front of you Exhibit 38? Uh, the video of my pregnant stomach. Yes. What is it? Um, it's a video that I took of my pregnant stomach because Mr. Eckerd asked me um, to take it for him so he could verify that I was indeed pregnant. Okay. And is this video an accurate reflection of what you looked like recently? Um, in September, I believe. And is this a video that Mr. Eckerd asked you to send to him? Yes, it is. Was that to show proof that you were, in fact, pregnant? Yes. Okay. Then I'd like to move into evidence exhibit 38. Your objection, I don't believe sufficient foundation was laid. Also, this video does not have any time or date stamp on it to be inherently reliable. I mean, I can't see it, but... Is there any way, Your Honor, for the video to be played on the Microsoft Teams? So that's what I think we were trying to have them do with that, uh, the hookup thing, but I, I don't know specifically how to do it. Beth, do you know how to hook it up or no? I do not, but I can ask next door. Let me try to make you a presenter again. Yeah, I hit play a couple of times. There's nothing's happening. 
Okay. All right, do you just want to lay a little more foundation for the exhibit itself? Uh, yeah, so Ms. Eckerd, when did you say that you took this video? Um, I took this video in September, um, and when I did send it to Mr. Eckerd on that date via email, um, I also sent him a screenshot um, that showed, um, like if you scroll up on a video, and it, it can show exactly when it was taken, where it was taken, um, to prove that it wasn't something like I had edited or, or taken prior to that. And why did you take that video? I took that video because he had asked me for a video to show him that I was pregnant. Um, okay. Because, and the, yeah, I'm sorry. The video that you submitted um, and that we're requesting the court enter into evidence is this in this is the video that you're talking about? Yes, it is. I was able to pull up 38. Yes, that's the video. Okay. And you I did it at the time. We're requesting that this be entered into evidence. Again, I reiterate my objection, Your Honor. I don't believe sufficient foundation has been laid. She says September. I don't have the date in September of the year. Uh, there's no proof she sent this to Mr. Eckerd. And furthermore, we don't have proof that it hasn't been edited. Your Honor, she's testified that this was the video, that she sent it in September. She sent it because Mr. Eckerd had indicated she should send it to him uh, to show that she was pregnant. The foundation's laid. She testified to all of this. John, does the video that you're uh, looking at in Exhibit 38, is that a true and accurate depiction of the video that you made in September? Yes, it is. All right. I'll look at the uh, exhibit over the objection. Uh, was it working? Uh, Okay. Uh, Ms. Owens, I'd like to take your attention to Exhibit 40. Can you please explain what these are? These are text messages that Clayton sent me um, from the time when he found out that I was pregnant through, um, I believe it was the beginning of July. Um, and these were uh, text messages, for example, that, that showed that that um i believe it was the second to last one shows i'm sorry this made it harder i wanted you to come over to confirm what i was doubting and it did confirm that so i don't see you as a liar anymore proving that i had gone over to his house and taken a pregnancy test that he had purchased in front of him and that he knew i was Your pregnant. Honor, i'm going to object at this time she's reading exhibits that have not been admitted into evidence more foundation needs to be laid as far as i'm concerned you know, I think that she's just trying to explain what these are, um, and she is. Well, I, I mean, she can explain that without reading the whole exhibit. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Without a, a, are these text messages that Clinton had sent to you? Yes, they are. Is the phone number that is indicated at the top of each one of these text messages a uh, number that you know to be Clinton's? Yes, it is. Was that a phone number that Clinton had texted you pre from previously? Yes. Do you know if Clinton had changed his number since he um, had texted you from that number previously? No, he had not, to my knowledge. Okay. And uh, these text messages, uh, were they sent to you during the time periods uh, between um, when you became pregnant to when this petition uh, against you for this injunction against harassment was filed? Yes. Are these accurate um, reflections of those text messages? Have they been altered in any way? They have not been altered in any way. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to admit into evidence Exhibit 40. Any objection? Sir, I am objecting for the record. I think there's a completeness issue here. These text messages have been altered. As the court can see, these text messages only include the statements uh, that Ms. Owens wants to include here, not the context surrounding the text messages. I also believe that there hasn't been sufficient foundation laid with respect to the actual dates that these text messages span. All right, I'll admit 40 over objection. Uh, 
All right, I'd like to turn your attention now to Exhibit 47. Do you have Exhibit 47 in front of you? Yes, I do. And what is this exhibit? This is uh, an email I got from Clayton on September 17th saying that he was unbothered by me going to the media about the situation. Okay, now, uh, You said when was this when was this email sent to you? September seventeenth. And it was your understanding that it was sent from Mr. Eckerd? Yes, correct. Okay. And what was this email in response to? Uh, this was in response to me saying that I uh, I had told him that if he didn't uh, continue to participate in the paternity case, that I felt like I was going to need to go to the press because I thought that would pressure him to come up with a parenting Objection, plan. Objection, Your Honor. She's providing a narrative that's not part of this exhibit. Um, again, this is a completeness issue here. She is cutting out the portion she wants and leaving out the context, which would be the email that she sent him that he is responding to. Um, I, I'm only trying to present the other half of it. Obviously, you can. I would go ahead and uh, admit exhibit whatever we for you. Okay. Your Honor, yeah, at this time I'd like to admit this exhibit. 47, that'll be admitted. Okay, uh, I'd like to turn your attention to exhibit 37. Uh, this again is, or, uh, what is it? I do not have exhibit 37 in, in front of me. Uh, it should be a video. Um, um, can, can you possibly uh, give me the context for which video it is? Or uh, it, it should be a video that was posted by Clayton. Oh, okay. Yes, I know exactly the video. It was um, a video that Clayton posted on October the 6th on his public. Wait, what, is, what is this? What is this video? Um, this is Mr. Eckerd uh, telling his 200 and nearly 300,000 uh uh, followers that um, the results of our paternity testing were back and he was not the father when in fact um, the paternity test results were were not back okay so this you had done a paternity test uh, correct the results are not back the results are still not back the testing is ongoing according to the lab but since that since those since the paternity test had come back you are indicating Clayton had posted a video? Correct. Where was that video posted? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you say where or when? Where? Um, it was posted to his public Instagram. When was it posted? October the 6th. Okay, how did you get a copy of it? Um, I got a copy because it was um, on his public Instagram. Okay, and was... Uh, was this an accurate report? Have you altered the video in any way? No, I have not. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 37 into evidence. Your Honor, I'm objecting on relevance. This case is about Ms. Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. Mr. Eckert posting anything on his private social media is not relevant to this case. Your Honor, as part of the petition, that Mr. Eckert had written, she, he had indicated that my client was defaming him when in fact my client was not defaming him and that she was harassing him by sending him emails and different text messages. I think that this is relevant to show that um, not only were the text messages and emails concerning her, uh, my client's pregnancy, paternity, but also what I had indicated in my opening and evidence that we had Ms. Owens testify to that she did, in fact, also message Clayton to take down certain false videos or um, false statements offline because she was getting harassed by his fans and followers. So this video is to show that this was the video that he had posted and the reason um, she had kin uh, continued communication with him beyond just the pregnancy and paternity was for him to take down certain videos, that it wasn't for harassment and that it was for legitimate purposes. This is that video that we want to present to show why my client was communicating with Clinton 
regarding that specific issue. All right, I'll admit the exhibit for the purpose of that limited purpose that you're referring to. Authorization to publish to the court. Okay. I'd like to turn the court and uh, Ms. Owens, I'd like to turn your attention to Exhibit 44. What is Exhibit 44? Exhibit 44 is a text message I received from Clayton on June the 4th. Okay. And um, was this Okay, this was from is this a text message or is this an email? This is a text message. Is this an accurate reflection of the text message? Has it been altered in any way um, that Clayton had sent to you? No, it has not been altered, and yes, it is accurate. It, but I don't see a phone number in here. Was Mr. Eckerd's phone number saved as Clayton Eckerd in your phone? Yes, it was at that point. Okay. And... Um, Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 44 into evidence at this time. Any objection to 44? Your Honor, I would just object for the record as to completeness. Again, I believe there is more to this text message than what is being disclosed in this exhibit. All right, I'll admit it over objection. Okay, um, I'd like to turn to Exhibit 46. Ms. Owens, what is Exhibit 46? Um, exhibit 46 is uh, a variety of different medical providers that I saw uh, confirming that I am, in fact, pregnant from the day I found out I was pregnant on June 1st through, um, I believe it was last week. It may have been uh, through the week prior to that, but I have the dates on there uh, through October okay. 11th. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, were, were, were these pictures, why were these pictures taken? Why did you save these documents? Um, I saved these documents again to try to prove to Mr. Eckerd that I was indeed pregnant because he uh, doubted me. Did he ask you to send these documents? Yes, he did. To show that, to show why? Um, he asked for these documents to show that I was indeed um, pregnant and that the pregnancy was ongoing and that it was viable. Have you altered any of these documents in a way, in any way to misconstrue their meaning? No, I have not altered them. And are these an accurate re reflection of these documents? Yes, it's entirely accurate. They are your documents? Yes, they are. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to admit Exhibit 46 into evidence. Your Honor, I'm not objecting because I believe the court needs to see these exhibits, um, but I will note that you have concerns regarding what they're being offered for. 
still on uh, minute 46. Uh, I'd like to take your attention to Exhibit 48. Do you have that in front of you? I do, yes. Okay, what is it? Um, this is a letter from the Arizona Department of Real Estate that they sent me after uh, looking into Mr. Eckert's conduct when he was my uh, realtor, um, showing that he was found in violation of professional conduct for not submitting an offer. Okay, was this something that you received from the Arizona Department of Real Estate? Correct. Did you alter this document in any way? No, I did not. Did you receive it on or about September 15th, 2023? Correct. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to admit this into evidence. I'm objecting for the record based on relevance. Again, this matter is about Ms. Owen's harassment of Mr. Eckert. We do not believe that this is relevant. I agree. It will not be admitted. 48. Your Honor, how much time? One minute. <laughs> I'd like to turn to Exhibit 50, Your Honor. This will be the final one today. Or Exhibit 50, do you, see, do you recognize that exhibit? Yes, I do. Okay, and what is it of? Um, this is something that was posted to Reddit um, by Mr. Eckerd under a uh, false name, and that was also in the order of protection hearing I had against him last, last week. It was discussed. Okay, and did you change this image in any way? No, I definitely did not. How did you, you get a copy of this image? Um, it was it was on Reddit. Somebody had uh, created it, um, but I, I know it was Mr. Eckert because only he had he had this image. Okay. Objection. She's, she's testifying, Your Honor, regarding information that she cannot testify about. Speculating. Oh, oh. Okay. Then have her lay a foundation that she has knowledge of. Okay. It's your understanding that Mr. Eckerd posted this this picture? Um, yes, because only he had he only he had the photo and the sonogram I'm I'm holding that's been edited. I okay. that's been edited. Your Honor, I'd like to admit exhibit fifty. Fifty at this time. Your Honor, I'm objecting. This is <clears throat> inherently unreliable. She's failed to lay sufficient foundation. We this this was not posted by Mr. Eckerd. And she's provided zero proof that this was posted by Mr. Eckert or further that this was sent to Mr. Eckert um, in this manner. I'm going to sustain the objection and not admit the fee. Okay, no further, uh, nothing further this time around. Cross examination. Your Honor, before I start with cross examination, um, my request would be if the court's willing to entertain this, that we pre be permitted to go until noon. Um, and I would be willing to waive closing argument because I do have important questions that I would like to go through as opposed to presenting the court with a closing argument if the court would allow that. Well, let's see how we're doing on time. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Owens. Good morning. You were, thoroughly, you were thoroughly questioned by your attorney at the last hearing in this case on October 24th of 2023, correct? Correct. And you understand that you were under oath at that time and you remain under oath today, right? Correct. And you're aware that any false testimony that you provided or provide today could be considered perjury, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so based on that, Ms. Owens, before I proceed with my line of questioning, do you have any prior testimony that you'd like to correct at this time? I do not. I want to make sure that you're clear headed and obviously uh, it's your position that you are pregnant with alleged twins, correct? A hundred percent. Yes, correct. What medications are you currently on? Objection, Your Honor. 
relevant, and that's an, that's an inappropriate question today. But overall, it can be impacting assessment. Um, I'm on prescribed prenatals, and I'm on folic acid. And I also, I'm sorry, I for epilepsy. Is there anything else? Is that your entire list of medications? That's my entire list because I was taken off of anything else that I was on when I found out that I was pregnant. And have you been diagnosed with any other medical or mental health issues? Objection, uh, Your Honor. I don't think that that's going into your mental health, going into her physical health, mental health. I don't think that's appropriate uh, for this type of hearing. That doesn't allow the question. Uh, depression. Okay, and any other physical health diagnoses? Epilepsy. And who who provided those diagnoses? All right, I think we're now over the report of that assessment. Understood, Your Honor. I'll move, move on. on, please. And how far along are you as we sit here today with respect to the pregnancy? I am 24 weeks along. And when was your last menstrual period in order to calculate your due date? Uh, objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think that that's appropriate at this time. It, it seems like these questions are meant to harass my client. She's indicated she's pregnant. She's indicated it's been about a month. You don't need to know things about her menstrual period. I'm going to sustain the objection. I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you please uh, provide us with the, your alleged due date? Uh, February 14th. And you testify that there's absolutely no possibility at all that your alleged twins are anyone other than Clayton, correct? There's no chance they're anybody else's. So you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one that he did not have sexual intercourse with you, right? Um, Clayton was not. If you look at the June 4th message, he... Sam, these are yes or no questions. Do you understand that Clayton was very clear from day one that it's his position he did not have sexual intercourse with you? Then the answer is no. And as we sit here today, you have participated in three DNA tests to try to prove that Clayton's the father, correct? Correct. And not a single DNA test has come back. Oh, I'm sorry. Including Clayton's the father. Okay. Sorry. It was, it was two DNA tests, not three. Well, you indicated at the last hearing that you were providing a sample for the third DNA test to be completed, correct? But the second one got, got – there was an issue with the transit according to the lab. So, I mean, that wasn't tested. So, I can't say that I have had three tests that have come back with different results because only two were tested. Ms. Owens, you've provided a sample on three separate occasions for DNA tests, correct? Correct, but the second was... was Sam, there was these are yes or no questions. I'm not, I'm not looking for you to elaborate. So we'll move on. As we sit here today, not a single DNA test has come back indicating that claims the father, Correct. The samples were diluted, and I'm going back next month is what it I was These are yes or no questions. It's a very simple question. As we sit here today, you have no DNA test that indicates that Clayton is the father, right? The results, the testing is ongoing is what I was told, as was Clayton's. So, so that's you said not that on a couple of occasions that the testing is ongoing. Correct. So, is it your testimony that you provide these samples and that there's no results that are coming from these samples you're providing? I'm I'm unclear on what you're trying to ask me because they said that okay, I need well, to go back months to give another sample that the testing is not back. So I'm I'm unclear. I guess I'm trying to say. Isn't it true? that the test came back and indicated there was zero fetal DNA. That's absolutely not true. Okay. 
And again, Ms. Owens, you have provided no testimony and no um, objective evidence or documentation to date to support that you have a positive DNA test proving Clayton's the father of your alleged twin, right? The testing is ongoing. I'm, I'm unclear, I guess, is what you're trying to ask me. Who is your OBGYN? Dr. McCool yeah, and Dr. H Dr. Higley. Yeah, I wasn't able to, to hear that, and I'm not sure if the. Uh, I'll withdraw the objection then. Can you please repeat that, Ms. Owens? Who who is your OBGYN? My main OBGYN is the perinatologist, Dr. McCool. And what is the last time? Oh, well, you said your main OBGYN. Who else are you seeing? What other pregnancy-related doctors are you seeing? Dr. Higley, who I saw last Friday, and, and an epilepsy doctor as well for it. He specializes in pregnancy. Okay. And in your, in your exhibit, I believe it was 44, you indicated, actually, let me go back here. I apologize, it was your exhibit 43. You indicated that all of exhibit 43 uh, contains copies of your medical rac records that would support this alleged pregnancy, correct? Um, I believe it was exhibit 46 that was the proof of pregnancy. I mean, we didn't do exhibit 43. I apologize, exhibit 46, my mistake. And in that exhibit 46, all that you have from Dr. McCool here is a screenshot of an upcoming appointment for Monday, July 24th of 2023, right? Correct. Is that so you, you, you understand that anyone can go online at a mommy where Dr. McCool works and make an appointment for it for an OBGYN appointment with Dr. McCool, correct? Um, that that is that is not true. Dr. McCool special is a perinatal referral to have to see him because I have epilepsy. He's a high risk specialist. You can't go and make an appointment with him. I had to send records to get an appointment with him. Okay, but I the only record that you provided this court with regarding your alleged high risk perinatologist is a screenshot of an appointment for Monday, July twenty fourth of twenty twenty three, right? No, I provided the last page was October the 11th of the diagnosis epilepsy during pregnancy from my neurologist after an appointment that day. Ms. Owens, there is no copy of any medical record from October 11th. Yes, there is the last is page. Is on the it's okay. October 11th. If you look at the last page. Zeman Glennis on October 11th, 10, 53, 20, Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, I, I apologize. What was it that the court indicated? A few more minutes, so we need to probably step it up a little bit okay. if you want to get to other things. Um, as we sit here today, Ms. Owens, you have refused to sign any sort of HIPAA release so that Mr. Eckerd could obtain directly from your medical providers evidence to support any alleged pregnancy. No, I, on Friday, I literally had the doctor send it to him directly. I had my provider send it to him directly. That That's an email I sent to him telling him that it was sent directly to him. I signed a HIPAA release. Ms. Owens, this is not the first time that you've made allegations that you're pregnant with twins within the last two years, correct? That is incorrect. Okay, so I would ask the court to take judicial notice, Your Honor, of the civil matter involving Mr. Greg Kolesky, who is present in the courtroom today. Um, and it's CV, let me get that number for the court. I have a protective 2021. Gillespie and against Mr. Eckerd, and I wish I was aware that Mr. Gillespie. 052893. Uh, I'm gonna object to that. But, uh, I mean, we, we had an exhibit that we discussed last time regarding that case and what was presented was a complaint and a motion to dismiss and there wasn't any findings from any court on anything related to that. So I'm not going to consider that at this point. 
Your Honor, I do have some questions that I think are very important for the court to hear regarding that case. I understand if the court doesn't want to take judicial notice, but I do have questions that are important that I would like to proceed with regarding the uncanny similarities. I don't think that that would be appropriate for this specific hearing. We know the scope of this particular hearing. Bringing up things in a separate case, there could be their separate issues. These are not the same thing. This is an injunction against harassment. I don't even know what that case is. It's not an injunction against harassment. I know that. It's not appropriate. Your Honor, this goes to the heart of why Mr. Eckerd needs this injunction against harassment. And Ms. Owens' pattern, her modus operandi, her pattern of behavior, her pattern of making the same claims against other men in the state of Arizona within the last two years. And I think it's highly relevant to this case because it supports why Mr. Eckerd needs this injunction against harassment. Because this individual has done this before, and there are concerns that she will not stop. I'm going to sustain the objection. I'm not going to allow that testimony. And, Your Honor, I would ask, again, the court to reconsider here. Because this matter, it's very important that the court hears how Ms. Owens has made the exact same allegation in another matter within the last two years. And that she has committed perjury in her last hearing because she made incorrect statements. She made false statements under oath regarding the nature of that case. She opened the door in her testimony when Mr. Lopez was cross-examined, when he was direct examining her, regarding the fact that there are no other cases that are similar. Regarding things that happened in that case. So she did open the door based on her direct examination. Your Honor, these are very serious allegations that the petitioner's attorney is now alleging against my client. She is insisting that my client has now committed perjury. My client has never been, has no criminal history, and is not being charged with perjury. So, I don't know. Like, that's just an allegation. Again, these cases are completely different. We're hearing that the attorney testified that these are the same. These are not the same matters. These questions and this cross-examination of my client regarding these issues, again, would be inappropriate and is outside the scope of this hearing. In fact, it even sounds like she's trying to bring out character evidence, which would be inadmissible in a hearing like this. I'm going to sustain the objection again. So, if there's other things you want to ask about her testimony, okay. You have about two more minutes. Ms. Owens, you understand and you testified under oath that Mr. Eckert blocked you from communicating with him, correct? He would block and unblock. But not from communication. It was on a text number, but we were always in email communication as recently as the day before I went to the press. He sent me an email. Well, Mr. Eckert told you he didn't want you contacting him anymore and then would block your telephone number, correct? But told me to email him. Ms. Owens, these are yes or no questions. Isn't it true that Mr. Eckert indicated he did not want you contacting him anymore and then would block your telephone number? Actually, that's incorrect from the early resolution conference that we had. Mr. Eckert told me specifically to contact him via text. I had forgotten that. If you look at whatever the transcript from that hearing, you would see that. And I didn't. I haven't contacted him via text after he told me to. Okay. Can you take a look at Exhibit 55 for me, please? I don't have an Exhibit 55. Your Honor, these are supplemental exhibits. That were not in the ones that are their exhibits that they would have sent you. It may not be marked by number is, I guess, the issue. Hers may not be marked by number. They are, Your Honor. 
sent uh, them the let me mark check my, my number. email. I did not see his exhibits. Excuse me. Let me. Uh, and your honor, I'm asking for more time because her not being prepared, knowing I presented these exhibits to her attorney yesterday, is coming into my time, and I have still several questions I'd like to ask. I was not aware that that he was getting more exhibits added after he already had testified, so I apologize. Uh, I okay. I, the well, text messages between the parties dated five twenty three twenty five twenty five twenty three. That's all I have. I don't have the actual that's exhibit. The, that's the first one, and then there is another one after that. Do you see? You have the exhibit that's from May 25th? Um, I don't see anything. I literally just am seeing a list of plaintiff's trial exhibits 55 through 63. Uh, can you scroll explain down. what the context is for me to understand? Are you able to scroll down? Your Honor, I'm concerned if she doesn't have these exhibits that we're going to need more time because this is very important that I get through this testimony. And I provided these to counsel in advance to avoid this exact issue. And had Ms. Owens been present, this wouldn't have been an issue at all. Right, but I have a protective order against Mr. Eckerd. All right. Just can you find the exhibits or not? Uh, let me just try to see if I can scroll down. Hang on. Maybe if I make my screen smaller. I see, oh, yes, I do. Hang on. I think I see them. I see exhibit 50, 55. Yes, I do. Go ahead. Ms. Owens, do you see exhibit 55 is a text message communication between you and Clayton dated May 25th of 2023, correct? Correct. The day after he didn't file the... Uh, my I would move to admit these exhibits, yeah, it's Your Honor. This exhibit. So it's not testifying. She's asking if you recognize the exhibit. Any objection to 55? Um, I no, don't remember sending I'll it. I'll admit 55. And here, Ms. Owens, on May 25th of 2023, Clayton says to you, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone. Correct? The, the context needs to be stated. He did not Ms. make Owens, one point I am one asking you yes or no me. questions. <laughs> and he was found in violation. Your attorney will have the time to ask you a question again, Ms. Owens. So just answer her question, and your attorney will ask an opportunity to question you again. Okay. Then can you, uh, I'm sorry, can you? Uh, repeat the question. I, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Your Honor, I'm concerned that this is that she's doing this intentionally to eat it. All right, let's just ask the questions. We're wasting more time saying all that stuff. Ms. Owens, isn't it true that on this text message dated May 25th of 2023, Clayton responded to you and said, "I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone." Correct. That's what the text message says. I don't have that. But sure, and right below that, you sent him another text message, correct? That's what it shows, correct. Okay, can we move to exhibit 56? It should be the next page of the document, please. Your Honor, how are we on time? Because I knew you said three minutes. I understand. We're close on time, so. I want to leave everyone time to do a closing if they choose to. You see these emails between you and Clayton dated May, uh, June 28th of 2023, correct? Correct, but the middle email is missing from him, but correct, yes. Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Exhibit 56, please. But it's missing the 56. middle email. Yeah, Your Honor, I'm going to object because this is, this, I mean, this isn't everything in, in whole. This is, you can see that there's an email missing between these two emails. I don't, there wasn't any foundation that was laid. I, I, but this is, this is, this was one of many emails sent between the two of us. Clayton changed his mind many times. <laughs> I, I guess just referring to these exhibits, do you recognize these exhibits? Um, these text, these messages? Um, I mean, that's, that's what they said. I haven't gotten to read through them, but I mean, that's what it says. Do you believe these are a representation of the exhibits or of the emails that were sent? 
Um, I know that my name, when somebody emails, when I email somebody else, has a picture of me with a horse instead of the LO. So I don't know if that's relevant. Whereas like Clayton's picture is, is shown with Clayton Efford. So I don't know if that's relevant. I'm uh, if I read these quickly, I can see if um, if they are mine. I'm I'm going to trust that they are mine, but um, uh, I haven't got gotten a chance to read through them. Um, Your Honor, she she did testify that she recognized the the email dated June 28th of 2023. So I'm asking for their admission. Um. Again, the middle email is missing where Clayton tried to trap me, but, um, uh, yeah, no, I'm asking if the court strike that, that there's no question before her right now regarding that. I'll, I'll strike that statement. I will go ahead and admit, uh, exhibit 56. In exhibit 56, Ms. Owens on line one, you say, I just need clarity as to what we are doing. I've offered to give you control over the outcome of the pregnancy if we date exclusively and care for each other, correct? Correct, which was one thought on one day and I took that away after, yes. And this is the exact same statement that you made to Mr. Gillespie back in July of 2021, isn't it? I have no idea what statement I made to Mr. Gillespie, but both pregnancies have been medically proven and I have the documentation and sent it. But Ms. Owens, Ms. Owens, all right. Uh, I, I can't keep everyone records. talking over each other. I, I sent the HIPAA records. I, I released my HIPAA records. Going, my there's no question before you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to strike this, these statements. All right. So let's try I, I to just answer the question. If you, I, I don't know what I said in 2021. Okay, so, so if you don't remember, just say, I don't know what I said. I don't know. And, uh, that if I said yeah. Okay, I don't there know. we go. Yeah. All right, so let, we have one, room for like one more question and we're going to be doing closing arguments. And Your Honor, again, I would just ask that in lieu of closing argument that I be permitted to ask. We've already that. done that. Okay. <laughs> We're already at 11.56 at the moment. So, okay, Your Honor. Um, and here, Ms. Owens, isn't it true that you alleged you were pregnant with twins with Mr. Gillespie in June of 2021? No, that was an email that he doctored in 2021 that I have already testified about that in the other case. So, no, I never said I was pregnant with twins. Can you please take a look? Again, this, our is, a was, this was an exhibit that, uh, whatever it is, I'm guessing I know what it is, it was one message that was doctored by Mr. Gillespie that appeared a year into the court case I had with him. Right, and we've already discussed the fact that I'm not really con considering all of that. So, let's your Honor, my, my concern here, and, and again, I I, I, obvi I mean this with all due respect, but Ms. Owens has a pattern of behavior here. She has previously made identical allegations in another case. The exhibits that I have today, as supplemental exhibits, all support that the statements she's made to Mr. Eckert are almost identical to statements made to Mr. Gillespie in 2021. This is highly concerning behavior. She has now perjured herself on several occasions during I, testimony, and I am not being given the opportunity to show the court the documents to support that she is lying under oath. Right. I, I have proven my pregnancy and had my records sent to Mr. Eckerd. Okay, Ms. Ellen, we're not, we're, Ms. Ellen, we're not testifying right. right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Even if it was true that Ms. Owens did that in the past, which we are denying, but even if it was true, that has no relation to this specific case. Just because she may have done it before doesn't mean she's doing it now. And we have presented evidence showing that she is pregnant. We have presented evidence showing I object. why That's she is. False. Yes. No we're we're going to do closing arguments now. So whoever wants to do a closing argument, Ms. Arena, go ahead. Your Honor, this is a clear case of harassment. The court has seen through all of the exhibits submitted by Mr. Eckert and the additional exhibits that were present, we presented today that the parties had an encounter in May of 2020. Mr. Eckert did not have sexual intercourse with Ms. Owens. 
Shortly thereafter, Ms. Owens began claiming she was pregnant with Mr. Eckert's child, with an alleged child. Mr. Eckert repeatedly, from May to today's date, has pleaded with Ms. Owens to stop contacting him. He has blocked her number on several occasions, and she gets a new number and or uses an app to continue contacting him. It has not stopped. Mr. Eckert has lost job opportunities, speaking engagements. He has suffered extreme emotional distress over the claims that are baseless and over her repeated outreach attempts after pleading with her to stop. This is the definition of harassment. The court's well aware harassment is defined per the statute as a series of acts over any period of time that is directed at a specific person and that would cause a reasonable person to be seriously alarmed, annoyed, or harassed. And the conduct, in fact, seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses the person and serves no legitimate purpose. Ms. Owens has fabricated a pregnancy now twice on two separate occasions. Mr. Eckert is the second victim of this. She has provided no medical records to support that she is in fact pregnant. As the court saw, her Exhibit 46, Your Honor, is not medical records to support a pregnancy. It is merely, and I'd like to draw the court's attention to this, it is a picture of a test completed at Banner on June 1st of 2023 regarding HCG. It does not say it is a positive pregnancy test. The yes, next page, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not your turn. I'm sorry. It just, it does. Okay. It's Fair not enough. your turn. It is very questionable as, as a woman who's been pregnant before that Ms. Owens goes to Banner to get an alleged pregnancy test on June 1st. And then she never, as far as, she never goes back to Banner Health for any additional testing. The next page of this exhibit is simply a screenshot of an upcoming appointment with a Dr. McCool on Monday, July 24th, 2023. There are no records to support that she is an active patient with Dr. McCool, that he is her perinatologist. There's nothing. We just have a screenshot of an appointment that was made, which anyone can do online. The next record, Your Honor, this is now a HCG test from any lab test now in Scottsdale. This is not a positive pregnancy test. This is a positive HCG test. Why is she going to a new provider for an alleged pregnancy test on October 16th? These next two pages of records, Your Honor, are, are, it's hard to tell what they are. They look like they are screen grabs of, of an appointment, but it's unclear. It, it's just unclear. At the root of this case, and the reason that Mr. Ecker is fearful, he is scared, is the fact that there has been a fabricated pregnancy. She has participated in several paternity tests, none of which have come back showing any proof or any signs of fetal DNA, Your Honor. If it wasn't for the fact that she has done this before in another case, this is unbelievable. It is, it is very alarming. She lied under oath, and she lied, to, she lied under oath at the last hearing. She's not being truthful today, and my client is legitimately fearful of what else she's capable of. He's asking that this court recognize that he has done everything to handle this appropriately. He has begged and pleaded with her to stop contacting him. There is no reason for these two to have communication, despite what Ms. Owens will say regarding this alleged pregnancy. There is no proven pregnancy at this point. So we are asking that this court find that she has harassed Mr. Eckert from May of 2023 up until today's date, and we're asking that the court find that the injunction against harassment needs to be ordered and maintained. Thank you, Ms. Rothfuss. Yes, Your Honor. Now, I would agree with 
Clayton that Laura's communication with him were alarming, annoying, harassing, if, in fact, Laura wasn't pregnant, and if, in fact, he wasn't responding to her through the over four-month period that she's been pregnant. She is pregnant, and he has been responding. Clayton has not met his burden in this matter. He's claimed that the amount of texts and emails has caused him to be alarmed, annoyed, harassed. Well, for starters, the reason there are so many emails and text messages is because the chosen form of communication between Laura and Clayton was through emails and text messages. And because that was how Clayton wanted them to communicate, not in person, uh, not over the phone, but through emails and text messages. And second, we are talking about a span, again, over four, over four months or more. There are going to be a lot of text messages or messages during that time. There are going to be a lot of emails during that time. Third, he claimed in his petition that he has not responded to Laura and that he has blocked her. Now, that is clearly a lie. And Sir, I would not object. Like, That's misstate the evidence. There is clear evidence to support that the messages are showing from a blocked sender. That is not accurate. Your Honor, some of those messages may have been blocked. But there are other communications in the exhibit, in Clinton's own exhibits, that state, that show that he did respond to my client, whether it be in emails or text messages, and we've provided those, uh, some of those exhibits um, in the ones that were admitted to this court. Now, Laura testified that there was communication even aside from the exhibits that we've presented. It's impossible to put all the communication within over four months into a, a, a short hearing, essentially. Now, I want to talk about the content of that communication. All of the communication from my client to Clayton was meant for legitimate purposes and not to annoy him, not to harass him, not to alarm him. Almost all communication between Laura and Clayton was for the purposes of Pregnant, the pregnancy and paternity. The only other sort of communication from my client toward Clayton was in relation to the post that he put online when my client would receive harassing messages from Clayton's fans and his followers. So the communication around that time, call it August, September, was toward Clayton asking him to take those different things down so that my client wouldn't be harassed. Throughout this entire time, since May, Clayton has never been clear with what he's wanted to do. He's been wishy-washy the entire time. First, he didn't believe that my client was pregnant, so she sent him proof, and she sent him proof again. He wanted numerous forms of proof. You saw in our exhibit the video of Miss Owens pregnant. That was a video that Clayton asked my client to send to him. How can you ask someone to send you proof of their pregnancy and then now call it harassment. Now say that you're alarmed. Now say that you're annoyed. Now say that you're harassed. That doesn't make any sense. He was also wishy-washy about what should be done with the unborn children. And we're talking about at the beginning, around May, June. Should, these child should she have the children? Should they be aborted? Are we going to give them up for adoption? Am I going to have sole custody? Is she going to have sole custody? He was never consistent with what he wanted. I'm sure that he was, I'm sure maybe he thought one thing one day and maybe he thought something else another day and then he thought back to the, we didn't know what he wanted. And that was communication that was going both ways, back and forth between Clayton and Laura. Again, he hasn't been consistent and that is what the root of this problem is. That is why there's so many communications back and forth. Had this been done in person, had they chosen to meet up physically or talk over the phone, things wouldn't get lost in, in translation through email, through text. But that's how they chose, that's how Clayton chose how he wanted communication with Laura. And that's what made everything so difficult. During this time period, Laura actually had to hire another attorney to help facilitate paternity testing. That didn't work, so then Laura had to file 
a, a matter in, out of the family court Section to create a parent These are not complaint. facts and evidence at this time. These are exhibits that Mr. Lopez did not get to present. I think she testified that she filed what was termed as a lawsuit. And they did not have, neither of them, my client nor Clayton, have had an attorney in that family matter. So they are forced to communicate with each other because they need to meet and confer. They needed to submit a resolution plan. So there's going to be text and communications back and forth from the two of them. Everything, again, everything that you've heard during, whether it was our case in chief or the petitioner's case in chief, this is a snapshot of what has happened over the course of over four months. We were not able to present everything. All communication between my client and Clayton were for legitimate purposes. Again, not to harass them. Look at the exhibits. Look at the ones that Clayton submitted. There are clear exhibits that show that he was sending messages to her. We have submitted exhibits showing that Clayton had been communicating with her. So the fact that in the petition itself states that he had not responded to her, that's completely untrue. He had indicated in his petition that my client had harassed him. Well, that's not what happened. Who was the one that was posting videos online and getting harassed? Clayton was posting the videos. My client was getting harassed. Not one communication. There wasn't one communication that indicated after they had been in communication since May. Since then, there was no communications that were sent to my client telling my client, stop texting me, stop emailing me, stop calling me. Not one. They presented one exhibit that shows one message that indicated that, oh, I may call the police, something like that. It seems like he might be worried. But since then, he had been communicating with my client. So again, you can't say that you are being alarmed, annoyed, harassed, but then going ahead and then emailing my client, texting my client. And again, for all of those reasons, I think that the communication between my client and Mr. Eckerd were for legitimate purposes for the, to determine pregnancy itself, moving into determining paternity itself, to trying to schedule paternity testing with the attorney, to the family court matter, and to today. And so for all those reasons, we're requesting that this be dismissed. Thank you. Your Honor, in rebuttal, none of the communication from Ms. Owens to Clayton has been for a legitimate purpose. As the court has heard today, it is clear there has been no DNA test or test of any kind to support that she is allegedly pregnant with Mr. Eckerd's twin. There is no reason for these parties to communicate. What Mr. Lopez is proposing is that if you block someone, but they find another way to contact you, and then you tell them you still don't want to talk to them in a polite email or a polite message, then that's not harassment. That is the epitome of harassment, Your Honor. The court has received exhibits in the first hearing from Mr. Eckerd supporting that she would find other avenues to communicate with him after he had blocked her. Again, it is Mr. Eckerd's position that there is no, that this pregnancy has been fabricated. And I want to be clear on this, Your Honor. It's possible that Ms. Owens is pregnant, but it's my client's position that he did not have sexual intercourse with her, and she is not pregnant with his alleged twin. And that is the root of the issue here. There has been no support for this alleged pregnancy other than her attempt to show the court and or Mr. Eckerd a picture of her alleged pregnancy, which again, we suspect may still be fabricated. So there has been no legitimate purpose to her communication other than to harass Mr. Eckerd to try to force a relationship on him. She told Mr. Eckerd on multiple occasions that she was going to force him to communicate with her, whether he wanted to or not. And he has been clear. He does not want any additional communication from her. All right. Thank you. So, 
as I stated when we first started this hearing, um, I'm not making a determination as to whether or not she's pregnant or not. That is a family court matter. That case is pending before the family court. The testing or whatever is going to happen is a result of that. So I'm not making a decision and a determination today whether or not there is a uh, valid or invalid pregnancy. I understand Ms. Record's position is there isn't. I understand her position is there is. But that's where we are at the moment. With regards to the evidence and the communication, the court at this time does find there were a series of events that were aimed at the uh, plaintiff that would cause a reasonable person to be alarmed and annoyed or harassed, that she, he was in fact alarmed and annoyed or harassed. I do find they did not serve a legitimate purpose. Messages that have been sent, one, he blocked her on numerous occasions. She even said in the blocking communication, can you unblock me so I can unblock you again? I got a new number and then there's another new number. I think that's clear that he does not wish to have communication. Nature of the communication, while maybe surrounds the pregnancy, the communications that I have a lot of concerns with are the ones where she's trying to make offers to him to continue a relationship, that she is trying to facilitate, if you do this, then I'll give you this. Uh, those kinds of messages are of the nature that are harassing and can be viewed as alarmed, alarming, annoying, or harassing. Um, there are a number of messages that were admitted that are attempts at, I, I view kind of almost as trying to, you know, get him to do and agree to things that are not necessarily, you know, it's not like we said, hey, can you take a paternity test? And he said, no. Hey, you know, can you reconsider? I want to do a paternity test. And then I went and filed a lawsuit because you wouldn't do it. I mean, that's one thing. 500 emails back and forth or messages, I'll say text messages and emails over that period of time to try to clarify and do that. It is, is beyond uh, what was necessary to be able to communicate those things. There were a number of threats to go to the media, which were other additional attempts to try to use the media as manipulation or the threat to go to the media as manipulation. I find those to be uh, alarming, annoying, or harassing. So I am going to grant the injunction at this time. The injunction would, uh, is going to prevent any communication outside of legal, the legal process. Uh, and specifically a legal process and court hearing. Um, so I am going to grant the injunction. And so uh, I will find the uh, granted injunction today. Um, and then I know Ms. Owens isn't present, but we can give uh, a copy of the signed injunction, obviously, to Mr. Lopez uh, today. Uh, but whether or not ultimately she needs to be served with it uh, so that uh, the service of the injunction is appropriate, so it will go into effect once the injunction is served upon her, it would remain in effect uh, for a period of one year. This was the hearing that she uh, had uh, as a result of that, so there's not an additional time to request an additional hearing. And if you guys want to wait for a few minutes, I'll sign a, an order. If there were exhibits that you did not offer that you wish to have returned to you, you can let the clerk know and she can release those back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. please. Good morning, everyone. This is the time set in FC 2023-052-114. Appearances, please. Beginning first with Petitioner's Council. Good morning, Your Honor. Corey Keith appearing on behalf of Petitioner Laura Owens, myself and client are both present and appearing in person. Good morning to you both and from the respondent. Uh, good morning, Judge. Greg Wootnick. I've got Clayton Eckert with me and my associate Isabel Ranney is behind me. Good morning to all three of you. All right, this is the time set for status conference. As the parties both know, a motion to continue was filed. Mr. Woodnick, that was your motion, so I'll allow you to go first. Judge, thank you. Uh, as the court is aware from the pleadings, we have zero disclosure. I don't think zero is an understatement. Uh, I did speak with uh, counsel in the hallway. He indicated that disclosure was forthcoming maybe as soon as later this week. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it, but in any event, we are not prepared to go to trial next week on any of the remaining issues because we have nothing. I'm asking the court to reset the trial for 45, 60 days, whatever your court's, the court's availability is, and I'm asking the court to give us two hours. Uh, petitioner invoked Rule 2. I'm stuck with it. 
uh, and I intend to present a case that has foundation for evidence and her deposition, I think, is scheduled for March 1st if she appears, as your Honor is aware. Um, petitioner failed to appear at her first deposition setting uh, without leave of court. So I've got to deal with that as well. So we're asking the court just to reset the trial in a couple of months and hopefully beginning today, there's discovery compliance and the issues of attorney's fees and sanctions, I think have to abide trial. And I think that's where we are from our perspective. Okay, and what time on March 1st, counsel? Great question, Judge. 8 a.m. this morning. My office. All right, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, we're not opposing the motion to continue the trial. We're in agreement with um, the need for the continuance on the trial. I did want to address, um, we received the ruling regarding our motion for confidentiality this morning. There has been new evidence, um, threats to my client's life that were made to her on Facebook since the pleading practice regarding the motion practice regarding um, that motion for confidentiality. So I did want to have the opportunity to address that with the court, assuming that the court's position still remains the same with regards to that motion. I did indicate to Mr. Woodnick, we will have a uh, discovery forthcoming by the end of the week with relation to my client's pregnancy records. Um, discovery has been requested far outside of the scope of what I believe is appropriate. And so I was hoping to be able to address that with the court as well today. Okay. All right. So we'll deal with the motion to continue first, then we'll deal with uh, re-urging on the confidentiality and the discovery. Sure. Any final thoughts, Mr. Woodnick? Uh, no, I certainly have argument on all of the confidentiality issues and I think Your Honor ruled on it, but I'll save those for later this morning. All right. All right. The court will grant the motion to continue. The court is going to vacate the hearing. I believe we had set for the 27th. Yes, we're going to vacate the evidentiary hearing set February 27th at 4 p.m. The court will grant the request to extend the hearing time to two hours. I wish I could accommodate 45 to 60 days. We're, we're setting out much further than that, which I apologize for. But Layla, what's our first available two hour setting? It's going to be June 10th. Your Honor, 8.45. All right, everyone check your calendar and see if that works. That would be in person again. Is it confirmed that was 8.45 a.m.? Yes. I do that because I, I generally meet with counsel back in chambers for the first 15 minutes, but I don't want that to interrupt any testimony time. So that's why I said it then. Understood. And that date and time works for me, Your Honor. All right. Does that work for you, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Counsel? Make it work, Judge. Sir, does that work for you? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll set that then for June 10th at 8.45. Now, with regards to the re-urging of the confidentiality motion, counsel? Your Honor, my client received um, Facebook messages on February 7th. Um, I prefer not to read them out loud. I did show them to opposing counsel. I'm happy to show them to Your Honor as well. Okay. It, it, the conduct has just gotten increasingly more concerning from the public. There almost appears to be some sort of a set obsession with this case. Um, and I think my client rightfully so has been nervous to participate in things like the deposition or, um, you know, giving up her privileged medical records because of this increasingly concerning conduct. Um, sure. Can I approach and sure. Mr. Woodnick, you've seen these? Sure. I know that our reply mentioned um, voicemails and things of that nature that my client had received. Um, nothing directly threatening her life at that point, um, but obviously after the motions and, and reply were filed, we started to receive these messages. And so she's just concerned that things are going to continue to progress. And Your Honor, I'll just note as well, um, the person who's referenced um, underneath the comment that was made is my client's mother. And then I think they're trying to send over her identifying information as well, uh, some sort of insinuation that they know where she lives and things of that nature. Thank you. Okay, counsel, I'll let you come and retrieve those. Council response? Judge, a couple of things. Um, and number one, in correspondence to Mr. Keith, I asked for some of the foundational information from that. Uh, whoever wrote what they wrote on that allegedly to Ms. Owens is not my client. He didn't do it. He's not involved in it. Uh, so I'm, I appreciate that that's not the suggestion here. Whoever wrote that, it's inappropriate. Uh, but uh, 
certainly not a reason to enter confidentiality orders or any sort of sealing, which I assume is going to be Mother's Day. And the court said that these are both public figures. And I think that the First Amendment does that. Anyone who might be able to mind, please mute your phone or your tablet. Go ahead, counsel. Use your phone. My ADD does not do well with those noises. Thank you. Judge, these are public people. My client wasn't behind whatever that text was. Frankly, there's a level of incredulity regarding that. I'm not so sure that that text is actually real and it wasn't generated to create an argument to seal or for the confidentiality issue. I can tell your honor that we're going to treat Ms. Owens' records as she needs to provide them. In this case, it's now seven months along as we are supposed to pursuant to the rules, just like I'm going to treat her as we're supposed to when I depose her in two weeks. But I certainly don't think that some random Bachelor fan maybe put a really inappropriate text to Ms. Owens maybe is warrant for the court to do anything other than remind everyone to act professionally, which has always been my intention. Thank you. Final thoughts? All right. I agree with Mr. Wittnick in part. This isn't his client, in my opinion, that's making these statements. However, when you couple the statements that are being made that appear to be getting progressively worse with the instances that were cited in our reply, the civil welfare checks that were sent to her home, the calls to her personal cell phone, when you couple all of these things together and look at the fact that they're getting progressively worse and my client is now being essentially compelled to produce documents pertaining to her medical history, we don't anticipate this getting better, Your Honor. And my concern is that as this continues to get worse, we start to continue to talk about the safety of the parties involved. I understand that we're talking about public figures to an extent. My client has taken a significant step back. I don't know if, in my opinion, I would classify her as a public figure. She maybe is making statements now to try to defend herself and defend her name. But, Your Honor, my concern is that if this continues to worsen, and like I stated in my response, we don't know what state it's going to get to. We also have witnesses that are afraid to come forward to testify on my client's behalf because they're afraid of what's happening to my client and her family. And so for those reasons, we believe that it's worth at least requesting that the court reconsider the ruling on the motion for confidentiality. Thank you. Okay, the motion to reconsider is denied. However, we will have the minute entry reflect that Arizona, it's ARS Supreme Court ruling 122 is in effect, meaning all media requests must be approved through the Maricopa County Superior Court. There are statutory requirements that include using audio only for witnesses, fuzzing people's face out, things like that, that could give some assurances of either anonymity or whatever else may become an issue. I agree the court has absolutely no control over what people post online. It is absolutely inappropriate to threaten people generally. So the court doesn't condone that behavior. However, I don't think at this point it rises to the level of designating anything confidential. So I'm going to affirm my prior ruling on that, recognizing that there may be evidence presented at trial that will require certain exhibits be deemed confidential because of their medical nature or addresses or other things. So the parties need to be prepared to tell me which exhibits at trial need to be designated as confidential, and I'm more than happy to do that. Now, counsel, you also said there was an issue with discovery. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client understands the court's likely need, based on the recent ruling, for her to disclose things like her medical records pertaining to the pregnancy. It's been mentioned in the pleadings that opposing counsel has requested that she sign HIPAA releases. Opposing counsel has also sent requests for production of documents. Those HIPAA releases request five years of her medical records. Under the recent Como ruling back in 2022, we don't believe that that's appropriate. We believe and are asking the court to order that while she should comply with requests for her medical records, it should be pertaining to the pregnancy, the only issue that's outstanding in this case. And on that note, Your Honor, there were two rulings on my client's previous motion to dismiss, one which granted in part and left open the issues of attorney's fees and sanctions, and one which I received yesterday, which just outright denied the motion. And so I just wanted to make sure that we were still only talking about 
attorney's fees and sanctions. And if that is the case, I believe that my client's medical history pertaining to whether or not she was pregnant in this matter is what would be appropriate and relevant for the court to have testimony on it at the upcoming trial. Okay, before I get to you, counsel, and then obviously you'll have final thoughts to go back to that. The court's intention was to deny the motion to dismiss at this time. So that's the that's the ruling that stands. Mr. Woodman. Judge, I appreciate the Como decision and I appreciate Mr. Keith's argument. The problem is the nexus of our Rule 26 issue, which is that the entire action was filed in bad faith, requires is not a fishing expedition under Como. Como was designed to stop parties from fishing expeditions. That's not it. We are looking very specifically for the mental health and medical records that would explain why someone would fabricate a pregnancy, why someone would appear in court in front of Judge Gail Ketsis with a 24 week abdomen, tell Judge Gail Ketsis that they were pregnant and then magically the babies are gone. And I think in order for us to do that, we have a right to get the relevant mental health records and the relevant medical records. And I also remind the court that that does include the fact, as we've pled here, that there's a history of the fabricating behavior. That's actually the nexus of our Rule 26 motion. For Rule 26, which to make a clear record is really Arizona Family Court adopting Rule 11, Civil Rule 11, not Mental Health Rule 11, but Civil Rule 11. And it addresses the propriety of filings and the propriety of signing filings, filings that were signed by Ms. Owens directly. And she filed them and then she filed multiple filings after that. And every single one of those filings made claims and assertions that this court has an absolute authority over. In order for us to defend or produce an argument regarding Rule 26, we need to have those records. We will treat them appropriately. They are not going to be publicly shared for any that we have any intention of doing at this point. But it's going to be part of a very public proceeding because Ms. Owens, as recently as four days ago or three days ago, published an article about these very issues. She's made it. She's the one who went to the Sun tabloid claiming not just that she was pregnant by Mr. Eckerd, Judge, but that she was pregnant with twins and posted a visual of the twins that she was pregnant with. We have a right to all of the discovery relevant to that for the attorney's fees issue, for the sanctions issue, and for the integrity of Title 25. And the mud that Mr. Eckerd's been dragged through. I'm not interested in her childhood trauma. That's not relevant here. I totally agree with that. But Rule 49 does specifically say we're entitled to five years of back records. And I think asking them to be produced is reasonable. I also remind the court as my final comment, they've provided nothing. When I say nothing, Judge, I mean no medical records, no financial records. I mean nothing. Even the stuff that is not even controversial, like legal fees, zero disclosure. So to come to court today and say, oh, no, we want to rein in the disclosure is a little bit disingenuous. They should have been providing records along the way because that's what Rule 49 required. Thank you, counsel. Do you do you recollect when the first filing was that would necessitate records back that far? Yes, it would be 2021, February. August 2021. Okay, final thoughts, counsel. Your Honor, just to be clear, discovery has been transmitted, albeit minimally, because my client has been afraid of the backlash that would occur. My client did send Mr. Eckerd confirmation that she was pregnant. She sent him over the results of her blood testing. She has sent him over documents. I believe that the evidence will show that she was pregnant. I believe that that will be clear once once everything is presented to the court. And I don't believe that it would be appropriate for her to have to disclose records dating back to January 1st of 2018. As the respondent is requesting, addressing her anger management, substance abuse, domestic violence and additional things. This is a fishing expedition. This is what's covered under Como. The difference is we don't even have the situation under Como, Your Honor. We have a situation where there is no child. There are no best interests of a child to be considered. We have a situation where the respondent is on a fishing expedition. He's trying to pull things in and twist stories of previous incidents against my client to make it seem like she's fabricating these allegations. When the reality is, and like I said, I believe the evidence will show this, my client was pregnant. She did have a miscarriage. She's no longer pregnant. 
And I believe that the evidence will show that. And so for those reasons, we're asking the court not to allow this fishing expedition. They're requesting documents dating back to January of 2018. This is absolutely should be covered under Como. And I believe that the court should actually look at this even further, because like I said, there are no best interests here to evaluate, to overrule my client's medical patient privilege. I understand that my client has an obligation to prove her pregnancy, and I think that it's in her best interest to do so as well. But to allow the respondent to go back five years into her domestic violence history, her substance abuse history, and obviously assuming that there even is any, it's just absolutely inappropriate. And this is a fishing expedition. Thank you. You said your counsel, you said your client did provide limited disclosure. Did that include evidence of the miscarriage? No, Your Honor. The miscarriage came further throughout this case, and the records that outline the miscarriage and her going to the doctor after the miscarriage have not yet been cited. And when are the, well? Your Honor, all of my client's medical records pertaining to the pregnancy will be sent to the respondent by the end of the week. I do have them. We were just waiting on a ruling on the motion for confidentiality because we have concerns that by next week they'll be released to the public. How would they be released to the public counsel if they're just exchanged between counsel? Well, Your Honor, I believe that they would also be sent to the respondent, and I can tell the court that even my own emails to opposing counsel have been, in this case, released to the public. I'm not insinuating that that is Mr. Woodnick. I understand he has an obligation to share the documents with his client, but the reality here is documents that are being transmitted, pleadings that are being filed, emails that are being sent between the parties are being released to the public in a matter of hours, not even days. Certainly prior to someone's ability to pull pleadings online. Also of note, those pleadings that are being released to the public are being released in color. I believe it's common knowledge that when you go down to the courthouse and request documents, those documents come back black and white. So it's clear to me that there's some sort of a leak to the public. That's why we filed our motion for confidentiality, and I don't believe it's appropriate for my client's records dating back to 2018 to be dragged through the public. All right. When did the miscarriage occur, counsel? Your Honor, I'm not sure that an exact date is known. What month? Your Honor, I believe my client went to the doctor in mid-November, and that's when it was determined that she had had a miscarriage. We would believe that it was in the maybe month or two months leading up to that time. So counsel, previous counsel should have disclosed that, correct? Well, Your Honor, I believe that the increasingly concerning nature of this case and the request for confidentiality and the request for the dismissal, I believe that that, given the fact that everything my client sends to respondent is being shared with the media, I believe that that warrants at least some degree of the court finding her actions to be reasonable. She is actually receiving threats to her life, voicemails on her phone. I mean, this is concerning conduct from the public, and so we were just waiting on the same thing with the deposition. I told Mr. Woodnick we would appear for a deposition if the court ordered us to. We just wanted to have the motion to quash and the motion for confidentiality ruled on prior to doing so because we wanted to have the court's input into if those things were necessary. But counsel, my follow-up question to you then would be, if she had disclosed it in November, wouldn't this case have simply gone away and these issues wouldn't remain? Well, no, Your Honor, because she did disclose the fact that she had a miscarriage. It's well documented in our pleadings. I understand that the medical record would be there, but my client does have a patient. She has privileges that in this case are not only being not considered or not fully considered, but it's being taken even further and her documents are being, I have no doubt that the second we send over that disclosure statement by the end of the week, all of her records will be on Reddit. And so, Your Honor, I don't believe that I understand where the court is coming from, and I think that had there been some sort of an agreement, we've offered for the documents to be shared between counsel. I've offered for him to come to my office and see the documents, and we've had some discussion about that. Obviously, the recent pleadings, I think, may change that from the court, but it's not us trying to hide the ball. It's us trying to make sure that my client's medical records aren't shared with the entire world. All right, we'll have the minute entry reflect that no party is to disclose outside of themselves any medical or other documentation disclosed between the parties. That goes both ways. I don't want anyone releasing any exhibits, medical records, or anything else regarding the other person. That goes both ways and truthfully should go without saying, but I recognize it does not in this case. 
Um, I am going to order that the records be disclosed dating back to August of 2020. That's one year prior to the first filing. I think that that's appropriate. Mr. Woodnick, do you have a release with you today that she can sign? I've sent that. <coughs> this uh, outlines that it would date back to 2018. So I believe we need to redline it, but that's fine. If, you, if you'd like to adjust that and then we can sign that and have that done today. Yeah. You can do that now. Judge on the discovery issue, if I may. Sure. Uh, I appreciate your honors ruling. Um, obviously, I'm assuming if there is something that comes out in those records that requires us to seek leave of the court to expand that, we can readdress that with the court if something is in those records that imagine getting part of a medical record because of the date issue. Uh, we'd be able to come back to court and address that if necessary. Both parties always have that right. Uh, secondarily, um, appreciate that Your Honor's not living this case every day, but the testimony, or not the testimony, the statement of counsel was just that mother says she had a miscarriage two months before November. In November, the parties appeared in front of Judge Gail Ketsis, where mother had a pregnant belly and told Judge Gail Katz that she was 100% pregnant by my client. Your Honor's not adjudicating that today, but I'm asking Your Honor to take back the protective order proceeding that was granted in my client's favor for purposes of consol not consolidation to be heard concurrently for the purposes of attorney's fees and sanctions on that matter. Because if what counsel just said is that she was not pregnant at that time and she lied to Judge Gail Katz in that proceeding, then I think that's sanctionable and Your Honor could enter orders under that proceeding. So I'm asking Your Honor to take that jurisdiction, but to hear that matter concurrently or to have that file available for our upcoming evidentiary hearing. Response? Your Honor, I would ask the court to deny that request. Um, we've spoken to experts in this case preemptively about this trial. The, re the reality is sometimes people have miscarriages and they don't even know that they miscarried. That, I'm not saying that that is the circumstance here. I certainly wasn't present saying that my client has not lied in this case. She has not intentionally lied to the court. Whether or not she was pregnant on that date, I think she could have testified that she was pregnant and she could have had a miscarriage days prior. I don't know, but I believe that the, the testimony in, in her deposition, the testimony in her final trial and the expert testimony that will come with it will make those things clear. I believe it'd be absolutely inappropriate to, to throw out previous proceedings in this case based on my statement, not even my client's statement, there would there would need to be an evidentiary hearing in order for that to be proper. But I think that's what he's asking. He's asking that the evidentiary hearing be wrapped into this. And Your Honor, that's not appropriate. The evidentiary hearing has already been done. And like I said, my client's statements that were made during that hearing were true to the best of her knowledge. The reality here is sometimes women believe that they're still pregnant when they've had a miscarriage and they don't know until they go to the doctor that their levels are no longer appropriate for a pregnant woman. Um, I do believe that that is what occurred in this case. Timing wise, I don't know if if any of us can will ever be able to tell exactly when that miscarriage took place. But but I do know that my client from from our conversations did testify truthfully and there, there were not misstatements that were made there. We're certainly not intending to change her testimony. But like I said, we have spoken to experts that have identified that 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 sort of occurrence does sometimes happen. Follow up question to his comments. Counsel, are you asking that I revisit the order against harassment or just for purposes of fees and costs? Just for purposes of fees and costs, because the order was appropriate that Judge Gail Katz has entered. However, she did not order fees and costs. I would contend that if she knew what we think the evidence will show, which was that Ms. Owens just lied and said she was 24 weeks pregnant with twins and then apparently had a miscarriage apparently two months earlier that had she, if any of that is true, that had she known that that was her testimony at the time, she would have ordered attorney's fees in Mr. Eckert's favor. And I'd like that to be on the table at the evidentiary hearing. Okay. So then if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is the separate cause number is you think what delineates and prevents the court from awarding fees and costs at our evidentiary hearing in its totality. I'm not even sure if I'm right about that. I know that the court changed the rules and required us to use different cause numbers. Otherwise it's the same parties and it could be the same cause number, but our rules require us to have two separate cause numbers for the protective order proceeding, which has already been granted in this tail end of a paternity matter. I'm just asking that your honor 
treat them as one for purposes of any attorney fees and sanctions you may choose to order in the upcoming hearing. Final thoughts on that? Your Honor, this is a res judicata issue. The issue of attorney fees pertaining to protective orders and injunctions against harassment have already been litigated. They've already been decided. In my opinion, to the extent, well, one, I do believe that it would inhibit, I believe it's a separate case that would inhibit this court's ability to order fees unless it were to be merged, which I don't believe is appropriate with it already being over. If there were more evidence after our trial that would warrant Mr. Woodnick believing that his client would have been entitled to fees, I believe that he would need to take recourse with that judge in that case number and seek appropriate remedies. I don't believe it's appropriate for the court to reissue something that's already been litigated in anticipation of Mr. Woodnick's assertion that there may be additional evidence that would prove his client's claim. There certainly isn't at this point. There haven't been those things proven at this point. So I'd ask the court to deny the request. Did either party have an attorney at that hearing? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I believe both. Okay. All right. So then what the court is going to do is the court is going to hear evidence and testimony as it applies to sanctions and attorney's fees and costs dating back to the filing of the petition, all pleadings filed within the Maricopa County Superior Court. So everyone's on notice to be prepared to present testimony and evidence on that. Whether I ultimately award anything as it applies to that case, I can't tell you right now because I haven't heard any evidence or testimony. But I'm not going to preclude myself from that option at this point. So we'll have the minute entry reflected so that it's clear. Your Honor, if there was, and I wasn't present during those proceedings, but if there was an order denying the request for attorney's fees at that time, is this court setting that order aside? No, I definitely wouldn't be. But are both parties, I recognize that the court can take full judicial notice of the entire docket of the Maricopa County Superior Court. So I don't need your permission to go look at that case. But I do think I need your permission to go watch the hearing. Do either of you object to me going and watching the hearing? Absolutely not. No, Your Honor. Okay. So we'll have the minute entry reflect that between now and June 10th at 845, the court will review the order of harassment hearing. Do we know what date that occurred on? The hearing dates, it was split in two. There was October 24th, 2023 and November 2nd, 2023. Thank you. November 2nd, 2023. All right. So the court will review that between now and then. And that'll give me a little bit better idea of what authority, if any, I have. That just wasn't something I was willing to look at until I had the party's permission. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And then with regards to Mr. Woodnick's request for the DNA testing and the vital records, is that disclosure you intend to present today or by the end of the week, as you talked about earlier? DNA testing and the vital records, what exactly are you referring to, Your Honor? If you look at page 14, I believe it was of his response to your motion. It requests the court issue an order compelling Ravgen, Inc. to produce all records and documents related to fetal DNA testing in this matter. And subsection D was issue an order compelling vital records to produce all records and documents related to fetal death certificates under and then the appropriate ARS for alleged twin fetuses born to petitioner. Well, Your Honor, there isn't, to my knowledge, there isn't a vital records record or request that would be able to be produced because there wasn't one. Regarding the DNA testing results that will be included, what my client has will be included in our disclosure. Okay. And when is that forthcoming? Today or? It would be by the end of the week, Your Honor. I just have to prepare. And just for the record, I believe that Mr. Eckert did participate in those with the DNA testing. So I'm not sure why he wouldn't have received those records independently as well. And obviously, I don't know either, but I did read in your motions that one of the results was lost in the mail. So I don't know how else that was conveyed to anyone, whether it was conveyed or not. I don't know. So recognizing that it may be moot. Yes, Mr. Woodnick. If you can help us. Smarter than the SOC, it was written by your gen requested you to release the information. So if Your Honor would be inclined to, since Mother's obviously now cooperating, if Your Honor would be inclined to endorse or include language in there, I'm happy to shepherd it over to Rab Gen, directing them to produce all records related to any DNA tests taken by or with Mr. Eckert and or Ms. Owens in the past 10 months, whatever it's been. That would be our request. And Your Honor, for the record, I don't have an objection to that. I believe it would be an appropriate disclosure. Okay. Well, go ahead. The other thing in our request was we had 
wanted mother to sign the requisite fetal death certificate and the verification so we could get those records. I realize Mr. Keith can't testify, but is the position of mother, there will be no fetal death records because none were ever submitted. If that's the case, I'll let the issue go. I'll address it at trial. But him testifying doesn't really cut it on that issue. If not, we need confirmation from the state of Arizona that there are no fetal death certificates. In your honor, that is correct. And on that note, and I haven't addressed this with Mr. Woodink, but I think it might be appropriate for us to amend our initial petition just for clarity at this point and to make sure that all parties are on the same page with what's being pledged. So I would ask the court for leave to amend our position just so that we could make these points clear in anticipation. Although I do believe the discovery and her deposition will probably do that to an extent. I believe it's appropriate for us to make that clear in the pleadings as well. And what are those intended amendments, counsel? Your honor, the amendments would be just outlining the new circumstances. Obviously, her petition was filed predating any sort of miscarriage or likely even a lot of the care surrounding the pregnancy. So it would be to make those things more clear. And also, your honor, I don't believe there were attorneys at the beginning of the case. So it would be to make sure that we're explicitly requesting attorney's fees as well. Okay. Don't you think your motion to dismiss addressed that? Your honor, I think the motion to dismiss did address that in part and it did request attorney's fees for the motion to dismiss. But if we're going to request it for the entire case, I believe amending the petition would be appropriate. Also, no, I believe the respondent was just allowed to amend his petition a month or two prior. So I don't believe that it would prejudice anyone with a schedule and trial out so far. I'd have no objection getting it done in a week. And if the court wants to consider our motion to dismiss a request for attorney's fees for the entirety of the case, I would be fine stipulating to that and saving the motion practice as well. And if maybe Mr. Woodnick is stipulating to that. She wants to make, if your honor wants to consider her claim for attorney's fees at trial, I have no issue with that. I have an issue with amending a paternity petition, which was perjured because I don't want to be precluded from addressing the perjurous statements in the paternity petition. If they want to amend it, that's fine, but I'm not ignoring, nor do I think I have to ignore what was signed and filed with this court originally and then repeatedly prior to us coming here today. And so I don't want to lose that opportunity because mother all of a sudden realizes that stuff that she put in that petition was not truthful. Okay. What we'll do is we'll treat the motion to dismiss as a request for attorney's fees and a motion to dismiss. Of course, I'm not, I'm not minimizing that, but we will note in the minute entry Lamar that both sides are seeking attorney's fees and costs. And then the leave to amend based on the argument you've presented today is denied in the event you have, you need leave to amend for some other reason that doesn't change the alleged facts that were presented back in August. Then of course, I'm not precluding you from filing a separate motion to amend. I I'm just denying your request as it's given to me today. Understood your honor. If I may, I just want to be clear. My intentions are not to change any of the facts that were originally pled just to expand on the facts that were originally pled. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that for the record. I understand. All right. Now with regards to disclosure, since we're set out now in June and we've got the deposition March 1st, when's an appropriate disclosure deadline. I don't know how much it sounds like everything maybe still needs to be done, but truthfully, this is not a complex case. It shouldn't take very long. You're going to have a response. So I guess I'll read this one too. Okay. Don't know what we're getting, but if we get HIPAA responses, I guess the burden is now on us to take those HIPAA responses and go to the list of doctors that she said. I'm concerned that that's going to take some time and she's having a HIPAA release today. Yeah. Do you have an inventory of what you can disclose now? Okay. Okay. That's fine. So obviously March 1st is a pivotal day. Why don't we set, we'll set the disclosure deadline 30 days, one more 30 days before trial. And that is for any disclosure beyond that deadline will be precluded. However, the parties are to complete initial disclosure no later than 45 days from today's date. So that gives you guys about 30 days after the depo. And then assuming that there may be additional depots that need to be done. Are there any questions about that schedule? Oh, yeah. 
just uh, my last comment and appreciative of your time. I just so the courts aware, I have every intention of taking this HIPAA release because I sent a bunch of them originally because there's a bunch of doctors that you claim. I'm just going to reproduce it and repopulate it. Is that okay, Bert? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, we'll have the minute entry reflect that uh, Mr. Woodnick has been provided with a uh, amended signed HIPAA release and council agree that he may amend the provider. And the date as well, your honor, because it requested yeah, okay. nothing. And I'm worried that they won't accept it with me crossing off the date too. You want me to sign it too? It might help. I don't know how you want to do this, Judge. <laughs> that's okay. okay. I'll okay. defer to you, Your Honor. No, that's fine. We'll just endorse. Um, who are we, <laughs> are we endorsing, Mr. Woods? Uh, at the protective order hearing, Mother listed four physicians that she claimed she was treating her current pregnancy for. Okay, and I don't want to disclose those today in the hearing because I'm not sure who I have here virtually, but can the parties send a joint email to the court with the names of those doctors? And so that I have a record of it, we will not put it in the minute entry because that is public. Um, we'll just have the minute entry reflect Lamar that the court will be provided with four additional providers. I think, but for, I think it's four, don't hold me to that. And your honor, I, I think it'd be more, um, just to be clear. I believe it may have been four then, but we'll, we'll figure out the list. And All right, we'll just have the minute entry cross out four and put more than one. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've di we've discussed disclosure. We've discussed the deposition. We've discussed all the pending motions. Um, Mr. Woodnick, since this was your motion, is there anything you feel that the court has failed to address? I think today was very productive. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Keith. Anything the court's failed to address? I agree, Your Honor. Thank you for the court's time. Nothing You're welcome. Enough. All right, everyone. We will stand in recess until June. All rise. Thank mm -hmm. you.